So, all right, let's get rolling. Isn't this cool? Sorry if I just, if that was like really loud, my drinking in your ear. Uh, but here we go. All right. Welcome to Starting Strong. <clears throat> Welcome to Starting Strong. Um, and what this is, is this is an encore to Thursday's webinar. And a lot of you, actually let me change something here. Uh, a lot of you were on Thursday's webinar. We got all kinds of really good feedback and uh, there were a lot of people that registered, like 1,500 people registered that couldn't get on because they had unit meetings or you know just had whatever was going on. And so we decided to do an encore and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we just do it live? So here I am, I'm in my home. This is where I film all my videos and stuff in this little studio that we got here um, set up. And so we're just gonna run this encore live and we're gonna do as much as we can to make it interactive in certain parts, um, especially towards the end and so forth. But here's my plan for tonight is to go through how to create the best year yet that you've ever had and that starts at the beginning. You've got to start strong if you want your year to go well, right? Because a lot of people, what happens is, you know, in May and June, they're trying to make up for a lot of the mistakes that they made in July, August, September, and so forth. And, you know, I'm just of the opinion that mistakes are best avoided rather than recovered from, right? So I don't want you to recover from your first six months of the year and then try to make it all up towards the end of the year, you know, and, and go into June with a lot of stress and so forth in 2014. Don't do that. I want you to start strong in the beginning. And let me say this, I forgot to mention this. Um, I want this to be as interactive as possible, like with, with all of you, but also let's spread the word a little bit. Any of you that were on the webinar on Thursday, we started trending a little bit on Facebook. And what we did is we hashtagged Pink Caddy Coach. So hang on a second, let me get a, another color pen. Oh. We hashtagged Pink Caddy Coach. So if you're on Facebook right now, if there's anything that you hear anybody else say, if there's anything that you hear me say and it's really cool or you have an aha or anything like that, um, you know, feel free to put it down and then hashtag Pink Caddy Coach. I will not be able to handle that marker. This is it's one of my pet peeves. I can't stand markers that don't write well. So we're going to try to uh, trend again tonight. Let me move this over a little bit. With Pink Caddy Coach. So if there's any ahas that you have or anything that I say or you know anything you see up on here you think is really cool, um, go on to Facebook and just post it. You know, just post it as your status and put Pink Caddy Coach if it's something that came from me or if you just want to say you know, you're really enjoying this webinar or whatever. For those of you that are doing Twitter, you can do the same thing on Twitter. But let's see if we can trend a little bit today. This was really fun the other day when we did this. And so tonight what we're going to talk about are leads, how to get leads. This is the most common question that I got when I ask people what you want me to teach them, what you want me to teach you, how to create confidence and some, some uh, goal getting advice and tips and so forth and the mind shifts. This is the, the juice of the content that most people had a lot of ahas around and I kept getting emails on and so forth are the, are the 15 mind shifts that I shared that we really need to make in order to start this year off strong. So let's start out with a, a little bit of context here. Um, the first thing is, you know, Mary Kay is an opportunity. And this is only for Mary Kay. You'll be able to tell because we're using Mary Kay lingo and so forth. Uh, Mary Kay is an opportunity. It's, it's certainly not a guarantee. You're going to get out whatever you put into it and so forth. I know you all know that. But the problem is that a lot of people are not getting out of this company what they wanted to. You know, their hopes are not being realized. Their goals are not being realized. Their dreams are not being realized. And there's a lot of tension out there because you have an opportunity where a lot of people are doing really, really extremely well in this business, but then a lot of people are not. And so there's this tension of not really fulfilling on the goals and the dreams and the intentions and so forth that they had really started out with. And if you're in that boat, so what? The big deal. That's where you are right now. That, you know, one of the first 
things that you have to do to change anything is to accept where you are. Now, I don't mean accept where you are and stay there, but you have to accept the reality of where you are. And if you, if you are where you, you know, in a place where you don't want to be, right? If you're not where you want to be, I hear that, that phrase all the time, then that's great. Accept that, own that, take some responsibility over that. And now let's talk about how can you change it, right? So that's the reality though, is that there are a lot of people who are not getting everything out of this business that they could be getting, that they should be getting, that they want to be getting. And everything that you want in your business is absolutely possible. You take a look at some of the nationals, some of the directors, some of the consultants are doing really, really well. And so it's possible. I mean, Mary Kay is nothing more than a neutral opportunity. You're going to get out of it whatever you put into it. And it depends on you know, how smart you are as you work this business. Now let's talk about the possibility. Is it possible, and every now and then I'm going to come up here so my computer doesn't shut off, just so you know. Um, every now and then, oh, I'm sorry. Well, let's talk about the possibility. The possibility is that you can have as much money as you want. You can make as much money as you want. You can have as much free time as you want. You know, this business doesn't have to be difficult. And that's the situation that a lot of people are in is they've created a very difficult business and it's complicated. There's too many, you know, moving pieces. There are too many people that are causing frustration and so forth. But it can absolutely be simple. It can be super abundant. It can be fun. I mean, that's what it's about. It's about having fun. If you do really, really well in Mary Kay, but you don't have fun, who cares? I mean, that's, that's my philosophy, right? Many of you know that my dad on his deathbed told me when I asked him, uh, you know, what I could do to make him proud. He told me, just be who you can be, do what you can do and live a good life. And so that has really become my motto. You know, how can we just, just try our best? You know, how can we just try our best and enjoy the journey all along the way, but have a heck of a lot of fun and make a heck of a lot of money right in the process you know I think there's nothing wrong with being abundant there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with getting flat out rich and I know some of you want to do that hey I want to do that too that's not the main thing we'll get into that a lot in the webinar or the the live stream tonight but there's nothing wrong with that either right I want to make this point because sometimes I forget I'm gonna talk a lot tonight about the goals that are gonna move you and drive you and the goals that are not and I don't mean to say that you need to choose one goal or the other it really isn't an either or situation, it's a both and. So it's okay to have tangible goals and intangible goals, but what you have to understand is which ones are really gonna move you and drive you. And sometimes, you know, they can fluctuate. So that's the plan basically we're gonna talk about tonight is changing the recipe. Change, I want you to change anything that's not working for you. And I want you to start implementing things that are going to work for you. Now, a little bit about me. Uh, when I was 13 years old, I was hit by a car. The car was doing about 50 miles an hour. There's no way I should have survived the accident if you really take a look at the details of everything. And it changed the way I look at everything. It changed the way I look at life, changed the way I look at my parents, changed the way I look at my friends, uh, changed the way I look at myself. I just saw the world through a mortal set of lenses for the first time. And what I realized was that no matter where we are in life, we only get one shot. So I've lived the last 27 years of my life really looking at a one shot mentality. You know, if I only have one shot, I want to make it my best effort. I don't ever want to look back on my life and say, what if I would have tried harder? You know, what could I have become? And so that's the, the way that my life was, was truly shaped 27 years ago. So I've thought completely ever since then. And then about eight years ago, I was, even though I had made a promise to myself, do everything I can to get everything I want out of life, I wasn't. Right? I know many of you will relate to this. You, you show up early, you stay late, you've got the work ethic, you've got the desire, you've got the skill set, you've got everything seemingly that it takes, but for whatever reason, you're just not manifesting it. It's not happening for you, and that's the situation that I was in. So about eight years ago, I found myself in a business event, and we did this process, and it was all about you know, our internal blocks and stuff, and I came face to face with my biggest core problem, my biggest core obstacle inside, and it was the belief that I'm not good enough. And I know almost all of you have dealt with that belief also. It, I think it, 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 uh, it plagues probably 98, 99% of us. I actually, I've only met, I think, two or three people that haven't really struggled with that belief uh, for, uh, you know, in, in a lot of areas of their life. So this is a big, big issue for most people. I'm not good enough. And it affects 
pretty much every area of our life. It affects our body, our health, our money, our relationships. It, affect, it affects everything. So I got clear that that's what was going on in my life. And thankfully, there was a life coach in the room, and he helped me go through this process of identifying what it was and where I picked it up and how I had kind of tied myself in a knot. And this process totally freed me. It was about a 15 to 20 minute process. And it completely freed me. I felt like I had, I, I had this, this big elephant that was lifted off my shoulders. I came home. My wife barely recognized me. People, people were asking me what in the world I was on, you know, thinking I was taking some kind of drug or something. And they didn't care. They wanted it. If it, if, if it, was make, if it could make them feel as good as it seemed to be making me feel, they wanted it. And so that's when I decided that, you know, I have a lot more to give than I had been giving. I've got a message that can help people. I can be serving a lot more people than I was serving at the time. And I remember asking myself, how many people have I not helped? Because I'm over here sitting on my hands because I'm afraid of trying. I'm afraid of hearing no. I'm afraid of people rejecting me. I'm afraid of what... How real does your team feel in NCAA Football 14? So real, you'll think you're running the perfect option play and turning on the afterburners past the secondary. It's so real, you'll start to question reality itself. Is time real? Is my couch real? Is this my real voice? No. Actually, this is. So go get your hands on the all-new high-speed, smash-mouth, mind-blowing, adjective-compiling physics that makes your team feel real. For reals. NCAA Football 14. Ready for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. How real does your team feel in NCAA Football 14? So real, you'll think you're running the perfect option play and turning on the afterburners past the secondary. It's so real, you'll start to question reality itself. Is time real? Is my couch real? Is this my real voice? No. Actually, this is. So go get your hands on the all-new high-speed, smash-mouth, mind-blowing, adjective-compiling physics that makes your team feel real. For reals. NCAA Football 14. Ready for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. you know, we'll be able to get whatever it is that you missed later. And, you know, I don't think there's any way for me to just pause during the commercials because all of you are coming on at different points of the process. So um, there's no way, like, if I stop during commercials, some of you aren't going to have commercials that are on. I don't think. Um, so anyway, but with the, with the chat here, the chat roll, Oh, Dana says, if you mouse over the video, it will give you a warning that you'll have a commercial in X amount of time. So she says you got to catch it at the right time. So maybe, maybe you can go ahead and X those commercials out. Um, I apologize. I was, I was certain that we had done what we needed to do to get rid of those commercials. So if we didn't, then, you know, we obviously have to figure it out. But like I said, we will, uh, we, we will post the recording and the recording does not capture the commercials so we are getting it uh, recorded okay here yeah I hear that you can't X out of the commercials you can only X out of the ads so anyway we are gonna run um, and I'm just gonna go through so if you guys have commercials I wish there was a way that we could do something about that but right now we just can't so anyway um, I decided that, you know, I really wanted to go for it, right? I mean, I, I had a message and I wasn't giving it. And so I did an athletic event called How to, Raise Your Mac or How to Maximize Athletic Ability. And there were a couple of directors who their unit meeting brought their units to my events. And they came up to me afterwards and they said, you know, um, whatever you're teaching, like we can use this too. You know, it's not just for athletes and so forth. So eventually, a couple of years, or a couple of months later, I went and did a Mary Kay event. I fell company. I fell over the hunger. That's what I love. I love people who are hungry for something more in life. So that's what I really fell in love with. And for the last eight years, I've been teaching and training in the Mary Kay. All right, let's get into the content for tonight. Uh, traditional goal setting. I believe that about 97% of the people are not getting their goals. And the reason they're not getting their goals is that traditional methods of goal setting don't work for most of us. I mean, if it did work for most of us, then we would be getting our goals, right? But we're not, most of us, and here's why, or a couple reasons why, several reasons why. 
traditional goal setting is really driven by ego and intellect. What I mean is that most of us are setting our goals with our minds. And the ego of your mind is what wants tangible rewards. So in the Mary Kay world, your ego wants the pink Cadillac. Your ego wants the money. Your ego wants to be a national sales director. Now, I'm not saying that anybody who wants those goals is you know, fully driven by ego or isn't you know, led by their hearts or anything like that. But what I'm saying is that because that goal itself has two components to it. But when you go after a goal that you learned you were supposed to want, it appeals to your ego and to your intellect. So at some point in time, you didn't know that pink Cadillac meant anything when you were a little kid. You didn't know that pink Cadillac meant anything. You learned at a certain point in time that you were supposed to want that goal. We all learned at a certain point in time that we're supposed to want money. They were supposed to want all these things. So the things that we learn are generally appealing to our ego and our intellect. But we've got to go deeper. We've got to go down and find what's underneath that pink Cadillac for you. So why do you so desperately want that pink Cadillac? Why do you want to be a national sales director? Why do you want to be a director? Why do you want to you know, make whatever the, the amount of money is that you want to make? It's the why that we've got to get to. And, and that goes beyond and under, really, your ego. So if you just focus on your ego goals, you just focus on your tangible goals, chances are it's not going to work for you, right? Now, if it does, awesome. I think about 3% of the people succeed with this kind of game plan, right, with traditional goal setting. And if you succeed with it, then go for it. I mean, keep, keep running with it. But if you don't succeed with it, then I'm going to teach you some of the things that you're going to have to change in order for you know, this to work for you, okay? Here's, when, here's probably the biggest reason this doesn't work is because when you just focus on your ego and your intellect, what this does is it actually induces fear in most of us. And I'm gonna explain a little bit later why. I'm gonna break that down. But traditional goal setting actually induces fear. So when most people think of getting into the Cadillac, getting to a certain unit club before the end of the seminar year, or you know whatever the, whatever the, the tangible goal is, most people, if they're really honest with themselves, when they think about that goal, they're actually a little afraid. They're a little afraid of two things, really. They're afraid of not getting it, and they're afraid of getting it. You know, because with the fear of rejection also comes the fear of success almost all the time. So most of us are caught in a catch-22 here, like a double-edged sword, where you're afraid of going for it and missing it, but you're also afraid of going for it and getting it. Right? The old Marianne Williamson quote that says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. And so the fear of success attached to the fear of failure is going to provide this, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario for most people. And it's just a, a lose-lose, you know, situation. So we've got to get rid of, and we can get rid of both of those. We can get rid of both the fear of rejection and the fear of success. The fear of success is more important to get rid of because that's the hidden fear that most people are not actually aware of. It doesn't make any sense when you're dealing with intellect and your ego goals that you would actually be afraid of the very goals that you're trying to get to, right? So it doesn't make any logical sense. That's why most people you know, can't change it. But we can emotionally get through both of those fears. Now you can have a win-win scenario instead of a lose-lose scenario. Here's another big, huge reason why traditional goal setting doesn't work for most of us is because the results are uncontrollable. You know, you're in a direct sales business. Everything you get rewarded on, everything you get paid on, pretty much uh, almost the entire business is revolving around somebody else saying or doing something. So what that means is you're not 100% in control of your business. And that's where a lot of people struggle, especially people coming out of corporate environments or other environments where they were in control of their results, when they move into direct sales and they no longer control their results, there's a lot of frustration. Uh, there's just a lot of challenges that they never had before because they're no longer in control. You need other people to say yes. You need them to pick up the phone. You need them to place orders. You need them to join the business. You need them to recruit. You need other people to do all of this work. There's only a few things you actually control in your business. You know, you control opening your mouth and making sounds. You control if you, you know, hand people out uh, your, your business cards. 
Um, you control, you know, just your physical activities like picking up the phone and punching buttons. You control the orders that you place. But beyond those, everything else from a results perspective requires other people to requires other people to um, to contribute, basically. Which means inherently, you're almost entirely out of control. And we'll go through the eight components of commitment a little bit later. And control is one of the biggest ones. So what that means is, if you're trying to focus on a result that you don't control at an unconscious level almost every single one of us will not commit to that because unconsciously we don't ever want to commit to something if we don't control the outcome. So right here we have inherent big, big challenges in direct sales with traditional goal setting methods. Now again, if these methods, I am not ever one to say this is right and this is wrong. So I'm not saying this is right and everything else that anybody else teaches is wrong. What I'm saying is this is another option that in my experience almost everybody has to move into because what they're generally doing isn't working. Here's my definition of wrong, something that's not working for you. Here's my definition of right, something that's working for you. So who cares about how long these goal setting methods have been taught, about who has gotten what using certain methods, none of that matters. What matters is, is it working for you? I mean, there's seven billion different people on this planet. Everybody is a unique creature. We have unique ways that we've got to go after our goals. So we all have to find that thing that works for us individually. And there is no blanket approach that's going to work for everybody. So you got to be flexible. That's what I'm getting at here. And these are some of the challenges that create you know, the problems for most people. Here's another thing. Traditional goal setting methods promote emotional attachment. And what that means is, if you get the goal, you win. If you don't get the goal, you lose. And since we hate losing, and since we don't know if we're going to get the goal because it's not in our control, we don't want this. It, so it's this emotional piece that induces the fear. Right? It's the emotional piece because since none of us like to lose and we feel terrible when we lose, if we're signing up for a game that says, if I don't get this uncontrollable goal, then I feel bad, your unconscious mind's going to go, why would I do that? Why put my emotions on the table to get hacked into little pieces with other people's agendas? I don't want to do that. I don't want to sign up for a game that I don't control and at the end of the game I might lose and I might feel bad. That's what the emotional attachment is and that's how it creates the fear in people. And this emotional attachment is usually between these two things, the person and the performance. What that means is I'm okay if I'm performing well. And as a leader this is one of the most important things that's your responsibility to not promote on your teams is that people are only okay if they are selling and if they are recruiting. That's one of the worst things you can do because most of us are conditioned to have this painful attachment anyway. And if you are promoting that, then you're pushing that pain button for most people and it makes people just feel bad. It makes people feel bad about themselves. Here's what I know. I know this to be true. If you treat people as valuable regardless of their performance, they'll perform better. Because people who feel good about themselves, people who feel like they belong, people who feel like they can contribute will perform better. People whose self-esteem and self-value is on the line, if they don't perform well, won't perform well. There's study after study after study after study that prove that over and over for the majority of people. If your feelings are on the line, you generally won't perform better. Now we think that's not the case. We think, and this is not a Mary Kay problem at all, this is a society issue. Society tells us that if we focus on the performance and we really put a lot of energy into this and we commit and we're disciplined and we give it everything that we got, that, that that's the way to increase your performance. But actually it's, it's the exact opposite. The way to increase your performance is when no matter how you perform, you're still okay. Your self-esteem won't take a hit, your joy in life won't take a hit, your relationships won't take a hit, but that's not the way most of us are conditioned to 
behave in society. Most of us are conditioned that if we're not performing well, all of this other stuff is going to take a hit, right? So this is what 97% of the people in my experience, this is my number, this is not any kind of study, this is my number based on my experience and it's probably a little low actually, but this is what 97% of the people need to understand and they need to start moving into more untraditional, uncontrolled setting methods, right? Let me check in here, how are we doing everyone? Let's see, chat roll. How do you know, uh, let's see, my cat just joined me. <laughs> cool, you guys have some lively conversations going on right now. Cool, Kathy says we're doing great. All right, Kathy, we're gonna keep going then. All right, the most common question I got when I put a Facebook post out, um, and by the way, facebook.com slash pinkcattycoach, I think most of you are on that page, but if you're not, go on that page, join our community, we have lively conversations. Uh, there's just a lot of good stuff happening over there. Um, but when I put a post out that said, how can I help? The most common question I got was, how do I get leads? Now, that's really interesting on a bunch of different um, levels, in my opinion. Because number one, obviously that's what a lot of you want to know, is how do you get leads? But this, I don't want you to stay stuck on this issue because it's really not that difficult. What makes it difficult is all the emotional stuff that I've already alluded to a little bit and I'll get into more of it. That's it really difficult, but it's actually simple. And there's only six different ways you can get leads and I'm gonna go through this really quick. The first one is your warm market. And those are your friends, family, pretty much it. I mean, friends and family. I was trying to add a third one in there, but I don't know who would uh, fit into your warm market that aren't friends and family. The second way are referrals. I think we all know what that is. The third way is warm chatting. Some of you just got chills that went up your spine. Because for some people, there's nothing warm about warm chatting, right? Uh, some people, it's great. But I know a lot of people that, that uh, would rather, you know, crawl across shards of broken glass than to ask somebody who looks all professional and put together if they're interested in Mary Kay or sitting does your team feel in NCAA football 14? So real, you'll think you're running the perfect option play and turning on the afterburners past the secondary. It's so real, you'll start to question reality itself. Is time real? Is my couch real? Is this my real voice? No. Actually, this is. So go get your hands on the all-new high-speed, smash-mouth, mind-blowing, adjective-compiling physics that makes your team feel real. For reals. NCAA football 14. Ready to be for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. How real does your team feel in NCAA football 14? So real, you'll think you're running the perfect option play and turning on the afterburners past the secondary. It's so real, you'll start to question reality itself. Is time real? Is my couch real? Is this my real voice? No. Actually, this is. So go get your hands on the all-new high-speed, smash-mouth, mind-blowing, adjective-compiling physics that makes your team feel real. For reals. NCAA football 14. Ready to be for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. You can just register right there, put your name in and email, and you'll get uh, over four hours of audios on warm chatting success. So if you want my thoughts on that um, at a much, much deeper level, just go there. But all of these are legitimate ways. I think the more that you do, the more of a chance you have to expose people to your business. Uh, but really, this isn't the problem. You know, The problem is not knowing what to do. The problem is not having the confidence or certainty to do these things, right? So the next piece here, which is kind of probably the second most common uh, issue that I had or question that I got was how to increase your confidence. Let's see. Yeah, sorry, Angela. Uh, uh, Dana's, you guys, this is fun. Uh, I, I kind of wish I could just like monitor all of these comments on here. This is, uh, this is really fun. Um, yeah, Nora, check that site out. Somebody said the warm chatting audios are really cool. Uh, so increase your confidence. That's what this is really about because none of you really don't have confidence in your ability to do any of those six things. It's just that you're not giving yourself permission to. 
All of you can open your mouth, make sounds, ask people that you know, whatever you want. You physically have the ability to, but most people don't have the permission. They don't, you know, they don't, they don't give themselves the confidence. So let me give you a few tips on raising confidence. And I can tell you that this is going to be really simple, but here's what I The things that work in life are generally simple. And every time I feel like I'm not confident about something or any private client not something, this is what we always go back to. We always go back to these simple uh, reminders. And that's really all they are, just little reminders. So the first one is focus on them, not you. The reason that people freak themselves out is because they're focused on themselves. They're focused on not getting approval. They're focused on what if I get rejected. They're focused on how they look, focused on what they're going to say. All of that performance focus, remember, well, I won't go all the way back. It's the person equals performance unhealthy connection that causes you to put too much energy on your performance, which makes its way into something like warm chatting, something like uh, making phone calls for people. I mean, that's a performance. And the more you focus on your performance, you get it right or not, the more you're going to freak yourself out, right? So it's not about you, it's about them. What is it they might need in their life that they currently have? Is it possible that they could be dying inside? That they could be miserable inside, but put together on the outer people do that. Almost, almost nobody walks around sharing all their dirty laundry. Hey, did you know my life sucks? And did you know my relationships are a mess? And did you know that you know my relationship with my kids are terrible? Did you know I don't have hardly any money. Nobody does that. Most of us, uh, you know, cover all that stuff up until an opportunity comes along, right? And I'm sure a lot of you were in that same opportunity, you know, situation, whether it was emotional or, or reality, like with money or whatever, you know, almost everybody has an area of their life that they want to improve upon. And my philosophy is how dare you keep an opportunity off when somebody else might need it, right? Your, you, this, this opportunity to call Mary Kay is not yours to keep. The wisdom that's in your head is not yours to keep. You've been given this opportunity so that you can offer it to other people. As a matter of fact, I think if you hold it to yourself, you're doing the most selfish thing you could ever do. And in my opinion, the, 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 the most ungodly thing that you could ever do. Because our Creator put us on this planet to help others. Our Creator didn't put us on this planet, this is my belief, to hold, withhold all the things that we know and not tell everybody else about it. And if you have an awesome opportunity that people could change their lives with, how dare you hold that? That's, that's one of the most selfish things you could ever do. So if you focus on them, what is it that they might need in their life? And is it possible that they could see this, this Mary Kay opportunity and maybe do something with their lives? Then you, you have an obligation to share that with people, right? And along with you focusing on your performance, what happens is people start imagining what's going to go wrong. Don't imagine what's going to go wrong. Consider what actually might go right. Consider that they might say yes. Consider that they might just buy the products and enjoy themselves or feel better about themselves rather. Consider that they might not say yes or no and that's fine too. And you might just brighten up their day. You know, consider everything that is a positive that could go right instead of all this disaster that might go wrong. That's what most people, you know, do is they focus on all the, all the disaster. And that's because most people are trying to impress others. Don't try to impress people. Try to connect with people. That's what the world's missing. The world's missing more connection. And you don't connect with people by trying to sell them something. You connect with people by trying to find out who they are, what they want, offer them an opportunity that can help them get what they want. And that's pretty much it. That's connection and that's easy. And if they say no to whatever opportunity you have, that's awesome. So what? Who cares? Like they weren't on your team in the first place, so you didn't lose anything. And if they're not in a situation right now in their life where they want to commit to something, then that's, that's perfect. Then they're giving you the right answer by saying no. And if you don't try to impress, you just show up to connect, then here's what it's all about. Just show up as yourself. People freak themselves up because they try to be somebody that they're not. They try to put on like the business suit. They try to 
be all impressive and professional and they try to pretend like they, they know all the answers. The, the majority of the time, the things that, you, that we try to do to impress other people are the things that actually push people away from us. And, and this is a theme that I think shows up in so many different areas of life that the things that we try to avoid or the things that we don't put enough attention on are actually the things that we have to do or vice versa. It's the stuff that we tend to do that are actually doing us a disservice. Like it's the, it's the absolute wrong thing that we should be focused on, but we tend to focus on that stuff. So show up as yourself, be 100% authentic. You all know that that's my theme really at the core of everything that I teach is, is just be you. I mean, be yourself, right? Don't try to be, uh, when you do, when you make this shift and you really focus on serving people and you focus on what you can offer to their life, you won't have the fears because nobody has a fear of serving people. I've never met anybody yet who has a fear of serving. People have a fear of sales, people have a fear of rejection, but nobody has a fear of serving. All right, how are we doing, everybody? Yes, Amy, this is all being recorded uh, without the commercials. And it's, it's weird because some people some people are saying that they, uh, they didn't have commercials. Um, anyway, so yes, it's all being recorded. You'll be able to watch it all and I'll stick around. Here's the other thing too. You know, last time on Thursday, I mean, I was, I think we were on for like two hours of Q and A. So anything that you miss, I'm going to sound during Q and A and I'll answer any questions that you got, uh, with any of the holes that, you know, that the commercials took away from you or anything that you just didn't get. Um, believe me, I'll stick around and do everything that I can. Uh, to answer your questions. All right, speaking of service, that's actually the very first one of these 15 mind shifts. This is the, the meat of this whole presentation, are these mind shifts. I want you to commit to service, not sales. And I just mentioned that, you know, nobody has a fear of service, but all of our fears are based on what, you know, people are gonna think about us, or they're, they're basically fear of failing. But you can't fail when you truly show up with a servant heart. It's just, it's impossible to fail, right? You show up to help somebody. If they don't take your help, that's not failure. I don't know anybody who thinks that's failure unless they're trying to sell. Because the fear of rejection, the fear of failure is based on the perception that you're losing something. Such as a potential teammate or customer or money, right? But if you don't have anything to lose, you literally can't. Be afraid. Fear can only be created if there's a perception of something to lose. And service doesn't have the perception of, of there being anything to lose. What we're talking about is getting versus giving. What I can promise you, oh, this pen is so good. What I can promise you is whenever you are struggling with fears, I can promise you if you dig into your, uh, your thoughts, I guarantee you you're focused on getting and losing. I promise you that. You're focused on what if, what if they say no, what am I going to lose? Or what if I don't get my car? What if I don't get the goal? What if I don't get the numbers because I just committed that I would get X number of, you know, whatever, um, leads or sales or whatever. So you're always going to be focused on getting any time that you are in a state of fear. I can promise you that. All right. We have 250 people on this line. Holy moly. Awesome. Commit to drivers. This is another big one that I heard a lot of comments from after our webinar on Thursday. Commit to your drivers, not to your goals. And your drivers are really, well, here it is right here. It's why versus what. If you're committing to a what, which is Cadillac, director, unit club, 50, team member, any of that stuff, anything that's a tangible, measurable goal is always going to be a what. And your what's appeal, if you remember, if I had all of you you know, live in person, I would give a little test here. 
your, uh, your what's are going to appeal to your ego and your intellect. And that's not good for most of us. That creates all the fear, all the problems that I was talking about earlier. It's because you're committing to a what and you're really focusing on whether you're going to get it or not, right? But when you commit to a why, why is it important for you to be a director? Why is it important for you to get into the Cadillac? Why is it important for you to become a national? Why is it important for you to do anything that you want to do? If you drill down deep enough, you'll strike emotional gold, you know, or, or emotional oil, like drilling for oil. You'll strike it. And you'll know it because you'll feel the emotions come up. Sometimes you'll start to cry. Sometimes you'll get goosebumps. Sometimes you get just, you know, super excited. But you'll feel when that emotional oil gets struck. And a simple way to do this is have somebody ask you that question over and over again. Why is that important? So if you say, I want to become a national sales director, and they say, why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? If you ask yourself this question, you'll get it wrong. I can, I can promise you, you know, 99% of you will get it wrong if you ask yourself the question because this is not an individual question or an individual exercise that's going to lead to the best results. The best result is when somebody else asks you the question and you have to keep justifying or you have to keep repeating yourself or you have to keep going to levels that you never went to. If you just ask yourself, you'll let yourself stop too soon. But if you have somebody else continue to ask these questions, there's something so powerful about hearing the questions or the answers come out of your mouth and sort of listening to them as well as saying them at the same time. So have somebody else ask you why is that important to you and just see if you can drill down. And once you drill down and then strike oil, right, you strike that emotional oil, now you have a driver. And a driver is basically something that's going to drive you into action. So here's how I can tell, or you can tell, if you found your drivers or not. Whatever it is that you're focusing on, are you getting, are you jumping out of bed every morning excited to go after it? If you are, then you're driven. If you're not, then all you can do is try to get motivated. That, ooh, that's a good distinction there. It's, it's a distinction between being, well, I don't have any room to write this, uh, being driven or motivated. I don't have another color. Uh, handy. Uh, yeah, hang on a second. I got one. Hopefully this one writes well. So here's the difference. Uh, this is just going to make the board like all um, busy, but I think it's really important. Are you driven or are you motivated? Ooh, that's good. Somebody please like tweet that or Facebook that. Are you driven or are you motivated? If you're motivated to get your what goals, you're going to constantly be going up and down. Emotionally, you're going to be on a roller coaster. You're going to have a lot of fear. But if you're driven to get your why values, then there's really nothing that's going to be able to stop you. You're going to get up, you're going to get out of bed, you're going to do everything that you can to make this come true. How real does your team feel in NCAA Football 14? So real, you'll think you're running the perfect option play and turning on the afterburners past the secondary. It's so real, you'll start to question reality itself. Is time real? Is my couch real? Is this my real voice? No. Actually, this is. So go get your hands on the all-new high-speed, smash-mouth, mind-blowing, adjective-compiling physics that makes your team feel real. For reals. NCAA Football 14. Ready to for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. How real does your team feel in NCAA Football 14? So real, you'll think you're running the perfect option play and turning on the afterburners past the secondary. It's so real, you'll start to question reality itself. Is time real? Is my couch real? Is this my real voice? No. Actually, this is. So go get your hands on the all-new high-speed, smash-mouth, mind-blowing, adjective-compiling physics that makes your team feel real. For reals. 
NCAA Football 14. Ready to be for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. Not results. We talked a little bit about results before uh, when we just went over the goal setting. But activities is where almost all of us need to focus in order to give ourselves permission to go for it, right? It's, it's our act. Here's why. I think I'm going to get to this a little bit later. Oh, actually, I'll get to it right here. So I'll get to it down there in a sec. And I want your goals to be step by step. And the opposite of what I talked about earlier, I want them to be controllable. And here's a term I made up just the other day. They need to be substitute ready. Here's what I mean by substitute ready. If you were a teacher and you had a classroom and a substitute was going to come into your classroom, I know because I used to be a teacher, so all of you teachers or former teachers, you know exactly what I'm saying. Or if you've been a substitute teacher, you'll know. The best teachers are the ones that tell the substitutes exactly what they should be doing almost on a minute by minute basis. You sit here, you take roll, and after you take roll, you go and you put it up right there on, on the door. And then you sit back down, and after that, you have little Johnny go up and you know go over, blah, blah, blah. So you get the point. But it's spelled out as though if somebody doesn't know you, they can come in and they could substitute for you because your goals are that, or your activities rather, are that clearly written. Now, of course, when we're talking about your goals, you're not going to have to rewrite your goals every single day and tell yourself, pick up the phone, and the phone's in the left side of the den, blah, blah, blah. That's not what I'm getting at. But they've got to be super controllable so that if somebody was going to watch you, they would know if you're on task or not. Or if somebody was going to come in and do it for you, they could know how to get on task or not, right? So I should be able to come to your place and know if you're making the follow-up phone calls and know where you're coming and all that stuff. But most people get up every day and their goal is to get five leads today. That's not, a, that's not good enough. That is really vague. Your mind needs clear step-by-step -step instructions. And that goal might sound like, go to the, I want to go to the mall. to people or handing out my business card or whatever it is. You just got to get more and more around these act, right? Because when you have more, you've got more certainty. That's another one. We should write that down. Clarity equals certainty. All right. So because most people are focusing on vague results, the results create fear. I already briefly talked about it, but I'm going to go just a step deeper. Um, they create fear of not achieving. Because here's the question. Can I do this? Question. None of us want, none of us want to fail. I'm just laughing at my penmanship on that one. None of us want to fail. So anytime you create a goal, your mind is going to go, the little kid inside of you is going to go, can I do this? Can I win? Can I succeed at this? And if you have an unclear, uncontrollable, results-driven goal, the only answer you can possibly have to this is, I don't know. I don't know. You can't know because it's not under your control, right? It's impossible to know if you can get a goal that you don't control. That's impossible. So this question is the one that creates all the fear. Can I do this? Now, if you're asking this question about a goal that you've already failed at, that amplifies the problem. Because now, if you're telling yourself, I want to be in a pink Cadillac, and you've wanted that goal five times before, then when your unconscious mind says, can I do this? The answer is going to be a resounding no. Because you already have evidence that you can't do it. And your unconscious mind in the process of, of uh, protecting your emotions is really brutal. Because it wants to do everything it possibly can to protect your emotions. So your unconscious mind is going to go, how can we do a goal that we've tried five times before and missed? 
Listen, every time we try to get that pink Cadillac, at the end of the year or at the end of every single month, we feel bad. Why would we keep doing that? So what happens is your goal, and I'm just using Cadillac as an example, and I know this is gonna hit home for a lot of you, your goal of Cadillac is actually triggering fear of failing yet again, so now it's a failure trigger. What a lot of people are looking at on their goal posters is actually inducing fear because it's a failure trigger. If you've tried to get something multiple times before, chances are you're afraid of committing to that again at an unconscious level. Now, does that mean that you can't get the goal? Of course not, that's not what it means. You just have to change the way you're looking at the goal. You have to change the way the goal's sitting with you. And if you get into the drivers like I was talking about earlier, that's one of the ways to do that. You, you're driven to the journey, through, you know, to, you're, you're focused on the process, you're not focused on the destination, you're not focused on the outcome. So hopefully this is, this is breaking it down and making it really clear. If you can't say yes to this, you probably won't go for it. If you can't say yes to this. But activities create this word I just wrote down, certainty. Why? Because you say yes to that question. In other words, can you, can, can you get 10 leads tomorrow? I don't know. I guarantee you there's times when that was your goal and you didn't get it. So if you've failed at that goal before, then there's a chance that unconsciously you're going to go, I don't know if I can get that goal. And if you don't know if you can get the goal, then there's a chance of you feeling bad. Right? But if you say, can I get up tomorrow and can I pick up the phone and push buttons and make sounds with my mouth and can I do that 20 times? Yes, you can do that. That's why there's so much more certainty with activities because you can answer that question yes, therefore there's really no chance of you trying and losing. There's really no chance of you making the phone calls and not getting the leads, therefore you put your head on the pillow feeling bad about yourself. That goes out the window when you focus on activities. There's no way that you can do the activities and feel bad about yourself because you did what you set out to do. This, this has become so much more clear to me like in the last week. I think I explained it on the webinar on Thursday, but uh, hopefully that is like really, really super clear for you. So anything that you cannot answer absolutely yes, without a doubt I can do this, you should not be having that as your goal. Now let me go back to something I said in the very beginning. You can have both. There's nothing wrong with having your sight set on Cadillac, but don't judge yourself on getting the Cadillac or not. Judge yourself on whether you've created Cadillac habits, right? Are you doing the activities that should lead you to Cadillac? And if you've created a game plan and you're doing the things on the way to Cadillac and Cadillac doesn't happen, you win because winning is determined by you doing the activities. It's not determined by you crossing the tape because there are too many variables you don't control. So I want you to judge yourself according to you doing the activities, not according to you getting the outcomes. However, you can have them both. Actually, the brain likes having something that it's going for. It just doesn't like getting judged by whether it gets or not if it doesn't control it. So this is where all of your control is I don't know where this, like this has become the physical analogy, I guess, of the journey. This is where all of your control is. This is where none of your control is, which is the goal. You have them both, but this is where your enjoyment comes. This is where your fulfillment comes. This is where you judge yourself by. This is where the game is won or lost right here. This is where all the certainty is. You can have confidence here, but this is what most people are looking at and judging themselves by, and that's why most people are struggling. And once you have achievable goals like this, then what I want you to do is I want you to give yourself some accountability to make sure you do it. Most people do not hold themselves accountable. The best way I know of to hold yourself accountable is for you to tell other people, I'm going to make 20 phone calls tomorrow and if I don't, I'm going to write you a $100 check. I guarantee you, you get on the line and make those calls because it's not about the calls anymore. As a matter of fact, you'll probably hope 
people say no to you so you can just get through the other 19 calls, right? And what will happen is when you kind of hope people say no, you're going to get more yeses because now you're not afraid of the outcome whatsoever because you got a hundred bucks riding on doing the activities. So I want you to set some accountability on the activities, not on the results. If you try to tell yourself, if you don't get three recruits by the end of the month, you're going to pay somebody a hundred bucks. You don't control whether you get those three recruits. That's not going to be a good situation. But I'm going to make 20 phone calls for the next five days. You watch your results. Any of you that are serious about your goals, I want you to get serious about your activities and I want you to get serious about accountability. Post this on my Facebook wall. Post this on our Pink Caddy Coach page. Tell me what you are willing to be accountable to and tell me what the consequence is. I've found that, that financial consequences are the best because we hate paying money out to things that we you know, don't need to, right? So I say pick somebody, pick something or somebody you don't really like and tell them that, that you're gonna, it doesn't have to be somebody you don't like, but you know, put your, your wallet where your seriousness is. So if you're serious about your goals, I want you to identify what activities you're willing to commit to, commit to them, put some accountability on it. I guarantee you your effectiveness, your productivity will go through the roof. I guarantee you that. And if it doesn't, please let me know that also and we'll see what's going on here. There's probably some more fear around those activities that we've got to you know, push through. But if you have $100 on the line or $500 on the line, usually that $500 check weighs a lot more than your fear of rejection when it's, you know, when it's serious and you've, you've literally put it on the line. So that's my key to amplifying your productivity when it comes to um, setting achievable activity-based goals. How are we doing on the, on the roll call, uh, on, the, uh, on the chat roll? I haven't checked in with you all in a while. Uh, we doing okay here? Let's see, if the goals are set high, this can create a fear of failure as well. The goal needs to be achievable for you. I'll get to that, Bernadette, absolutely. Uh, everybody's goals are going to be different based on their strengths. Yes, 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 yes. Valerie, that's what was missing. Accountability, yeah, Val, jump on accountability. Um, post it in the, in the camp page. You got all kinds of people in there that are willing to jump on with you. Yes, what you said, Bernadette, is absolutely true. Um, the goals have to be, well, I'm gonna get into that in a second. Probably not a second, but in a few minutes. Um, all right, number four, commit to changing yourself, not them. When I ask people what they want to change in their business, almost all of the answers revolve around other people. They say, like, I wish I could find people who have money. I wish I could find people who have a professional mentality. They see the, the, uh, the advantages of investing into their business. I wish I could find people who show up on time. I wish I could find people who had integrity. I wish I could make people call me back. I wish people would just stop or tell me they're not gonna call me back. It's so focused on them that without them knowing it, basically what they're, you know, what they're blurting out is, I wish I could change everybody else so that my business would be different. Very rarely do people say, I wish I could upgrade my responsibility and accountability so that I did the things I know how to do. You know, every once in a while people will say, I wish I didn't have a fear of failure, but, so, but most of it is focused on what they want to change in the outside world, right? What they wish was different for everybody else. That is not ever going to yield positive results and at least not long lasting sustainable results. Any focus that you have on other people as though they're wrong and they're the ones that need to be fixed, you're taking your power away. You're turning yourself into a victim. If you want to be empowered, you've got to focus in here on yourself when it comes to this stuff. What can you do differently? What habits can you change differently? And here's the key. Oh, I love this one. Become who you want to attract. A lot of people are saying, I wish I had people who have abundant mentality, but generally, you don't have the abundant mentality and that's why you're attracting other people that also don't have the abundant mentality. I want you to think of yourself as a magnet. If you don't like what's being attracted to the magnet, you can do one of two things. You can try to change 
those things that are being attracted to the magnet or you can change the magnet and in doing that it will change the things that are attracted to the magnet in this case the people so when you do the work on yourself when you show up as the embodiment of abundance as the embodiment of unconditional love if you really truly respect people whether they say yes or no if you really truly care for people if you really how real does your team feel in NCAA football 14? So real you'll think you're running the perfect option play and turning on the afterburners past the secondary. It's so real you'll start to question reality itself. Is time real? Is my couch real? Is this my real voice? No. Actually, this is. So go get your hands on the all-new high-speed smash mouth mind-blowing adjective compiling physics that makes your team feel real. For reals. NCAA football 14. Ready for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. There's a reason no one says easy like Monday morning. Sundays are the warrior's day to unplug and recharge. What if this feeling could last all week? With CenturyLink as your trusted partner, it can. Our visionary cloud infrastructure and global broadband network free you to focus on what matters. With custom communication solutions and dedicated support, your business can shine all week long. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. not approval. This is a huge one. Most people will sacrifice their integrity in order to get approval from other people, in order to avoid rejection, in order to get people to think that they're good enough, in order to get people's favor. A lot of times people will sacrifice their integrity. Any of you that are active in the Pink Caddy page, on the Facebook page, you saw that one of the the success stories that I highlighted right after the turn of the year was somebody who decided not to put their 24th recruit in on their credit card or talk somebody in just to get into the court of sharing. She finished with 23 instead of 24, but she chose not to sacrifice the integrity just so that she could get hollow approval. I say hollow approval because she wouldn't have really felt good about herself. As she was getting recognized in the meetings or at seminar, there would have, there would have been something inside and she would have known she didn't do it. She would have known she bought it. And I honor that so much. And a lot of people are, because they're so focused on you know, everything that we've been talking about, I got to get to the, to the destination, I got to get the Cadillac, I got to make that court. Because they're so emotionally attached to that, they, they sacrifice their internal integrity in order to get the outcome because they think they're going to feel good. But any of you who've ever done that, and I've done this, any of you who've ever done that in the past, you know it ain't worth it. You know that you might get this approval, you might get the recognition, you might get the extra money, but it's not worth the price that you sold your integrity for. It's absolutely not worth it. And I know that you will be rewarded many, many times over when you are more committed to your integrity than you are approval. So in this business, you are more committed to the values that Mary Kay Ash herself put in motion 50 years ago than you are trying to get to a goal that you set for yourself, especially if it's an ego and an intellect goal. Just don't do that. That's a losing proposition. Plus, you're not, see, what a lot of people do is they think, well, if I just pass this line just this once, just this once, if I put it on the card just this once, then next time I'll do it the right way. Uh-uh. It don't work that way. If you sacrifice your integrity once, it's easier to sacrifice it twice. When you sacrifice it twice, you got yourself a habit going on and you haven't proven to yourself that you can even do it the right way. So I would rather you maintain your integrity and miss, quote unquote, fail, but miss your goal with gritty than make your goal without integrity. Because at the end of the day, at the end of your life, and even care about these goals that you got, you're going to look back and you're going to judge yourself based on your integrity. Who to yourself? Did you do what you believed was right throughout the majority of your life? Now, I know this is a controversial subject for a lot of people because 
This is what some people do. I don't know how many. I'm not trying to burst any bubbles here. I'm not trying to, you know, throw anybody under the bus. But this is a this is an industry-wide, it's a worldwide problem. It's an industry-wide problem in direct sales. And it's a problem within Mary Kay for some people. So I want to talk about reality because I don't want you to do that. I don't, and I guarantee you, you will feel better about yourself when you're more committed to this than you are that. And here's the thing: when you're more committed to this, all of the approval will come, all the tangible result will come by the won't feel bad about yourself. So please do not sell your integrity for any form. And you and if, if you've ever done this before, you know you think you're gonna feel good walking across that stage or getting recognized, you think you're gonna feel good and you don't because you know you feel like you're out of integrity, because you are. You're not in integrity. And 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 I believe, you know, that Mary Kay Ash herself would say, sweetheart, do not put that 24th person in. Keep your integrity because that is, is about. It's not about hitting some destination that puts in motion this habit of continually seeking this negative stuff. Anyway, um, enough on that. If you want me to talk more about that, we can get into it during Q&A. Number six, commit to, uh, commit to, dang it, <laughs> hang on. I'm all fired up. Now I'm forgetting what some of this stuff is. And I'm surprised these are two of the ones that I forgot because these are two of the ones that a lot of people were talking about. Commit to excellence, not perfection. Excellence is something you can do in everything. Perfection is something that just crushes most people. It goes back to this whole person equals performer thing that I talked about, but this is a crushing, like a, a, it, it's a crushing game to play when you seek perfection. But here's the thing. Don't expect anybody else to have the same values on excellence that you do. Don't expect other people to think that, <clears throat> don't expect other people to call you if they're not going to make the meeting. That's your definition of excellence. That's not theirs. <clears throat> Don't expect them to have the same values that you have. Sorry. <clears throat> um, and and uh, the other day we hashtagged excellencism. So let's stop dealing with perfectionism and let's focus on excellencism. Right? Can you bring excellence? into every area of your business and every area of your life? And the answer is absolutely. All right, this is what Bernadette was getting into, really. Uh, commit to, now I've got just a slightly different way to present this. Commit to believable goals. Don't commit to doable goals. Listen, all of the goals that, you, you know, that you've ever heard of in Mary Kay are doable. If there's anybody that's become a national sales director in two years or one year or whatever it is, it's doable. But if you don't believe it, I don't care if anybody's ever done it before because if you don't believe it, you won't do it. So this is more important. Do I believe it than can it be done? And too many people are trying to motivate themselves with the stories of other people and then they come back and go, well, so-and-so did it in six months. So-and-so did it in 30 days. So I can too. But if you're really honest with yourself most of the time, you don't believe the very words that are coming out of your mouth. Now, if you do, awesome. I'm not saying don't go for it, but don't go for it if you don't really believe it because you're setting yourself up to fail in the beginning, right? Now, I'm positive there are people who will tell you, you know, I didn't believe that I could get the goal in, you know, it, I didn't believe I could become a national in 14 months or I didn't believe I could do this. Those are anomalies. And I'm not saying they're lying. I'm just saying that doesn't work for 97 plus percent of us. So again, this is not a right or wrong across, you know, across the board for everybody. Uh, but if you don't internally believe it enough to get in motion, and that's what it all comes down to, do you, are you going to get in motion? Some people might not believe that it was possible, but they got in motion and then they made it happen. Most people don't believe it's possible, so they don't get in motion. At some point in time, they pull back, and that's a problem. So what matters is do you believe your goals? Now, in order for you to really go after your goals and commit to them, you've got to make sure that you've, that you've covered these eight components of commitment.
<clears throat> I don't have them written down here, so let me, let me find a clean page and I'll write them down here for you. Commitment. There are eight things that your goals have to have. This is like a checklist. It should be check, 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 check. Okay? Clarity. And you're going to notice a lot of these words I've already talked about. Control. Congruence. I'll go through each one of these briefly here in a moment. Um, charge. Challenge. Choice. Certainty and completion. Now, all of you in the Eagles Club that just joined the Whatever It Takes program, you got two, two months in the Eagles Club. All of you in the Eagles Club, there's a audio training that you have access to. It's in the archives. Um, and it goes like an hour and 20 minutes on this topic. So it, with each one of them, I drill deep, deep, deep. So I'm not going to try to go super deep on this one. But let me just briefly explain with each one of these. You have to have a lot of clarity on your goals. The Because this is all at the unconscious level. That's what this is about. Unconscious commitment. It's about how your unconscious mind works. Not how your ego and your intellect work. How does your unconscious mind work at a deeper level? And how does your heart work? Your unconscious mind needs clarity. It needs to know exactly what you want it to do. It needs to know exactly what you're wanting the outcome to be. That's why the, the, uh, the, the clarity piece and, and it, your goals not being vague is so important and your activities are so important. It's clarity. Control is huge for the unconscious mind. Uh, as, as you know, a little kid, and that's how the unconscious mind really works, we don't want to try anything and give it our best shot if we don't control the outcome. So again, that goes back to it's so many of the things that I've already talked about touch on a lot of these, right? And, and they all kind of weave in. Um, but if you're not in control of your goals, you won't fully commit to them. Congruence means that your goals better be aligned with your purpose, with your values, with your beliefs, you know, your drivers and so forth. So like if you have a high value on spending a lot of time with your family, but you think the way you, you hold on to the goal of getting into a pink Cadillac means that you're going to spend more time away from your family then your goal is not congruent with your value. Those have to be, those have to play together. You've got to do some massaging one way or the other and make sure that you can get them both without sacrificing one. So that's one of the most common issues that we have with congruence where achieving the goal actually um, poisons you know, something else in your life. Charge, that's emotional charge. You've got to be fired up about your goals. You have to have a lot of emotional desire to get these goals. And that's why you've got to go deeper and find your driver because that's where all the emotional charge is. Most people have a lot of emotional charge in their goals, but it's negative. It's all the fear that's surrounding not getting the goals. And that emotional charge will drive them away from taking action because that's, you know, that's, that's in the direction of the fear, right? Challenge. We all love to grow. I mean, that's one of the things that I think we're all here to do is evolve as a person. So if your goals aren't going to stretch you a little bit, there's going to be a piece of you that doesn't really care all that much about it. If you know that you can remain in your comfort zone and in your familiarity zone and get your goals, you're not going to have any charge on that. You're not going to have any, any excitement about growth. So your, your goals have to challenge you for your unconscious mind to get excited. Choice. Your goals have to be yours and you just have to you know, apply this idea of choice pretty much everywhere in your whole life. I mean, from every different angle, everybody has their own choice on whether they say yes or no, and that's gotta be okay with you. Your goals have to be something that you decided. It's not something that somebody else gave to you. Um, your, the way you get to your goals have to be under your choice. It's not you know, that somebody didn't just give you this, this uh, one size fits all approach to get to your goals. If you don't have choice in, in the path, that's not gonna work either. Certainty, we've talked a lot about. You've got to have certainty in yourself. You've got to have certainty in the opportunity. You've got to have certainty in the activities of what you've got to do. You know, certainty is super attractive. That's one of the most attractive um, things that you can bring into your business is certainty. And then finally, completion. Completion means that you have to have, you have to be able to like check things off on the path. So at the end of every single day, 
<clears throat> you're not going to be able to say, hey, I became a, a sales director today, or hey, I became a national today. But can you say, hey, I did 20 phone calls today? That's a check mark under completion, which makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you're, 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 uh, you're progressing on the path. One of the most challenging things that people create for themselves are these really long-term goals. Like I want to be a national sales director in a year. Now that might be sh short <clears throat> for being a national sales director. But that's a heck of a long time away for your unconscious mind. You don't want to delay gratification for a year. Every single day you should have something that you can feel good about that you completed. If you don't feel like you completed something and if you feel like there's a, a possibility that you're going to try without getting that sense of accomplishment, then you're going to resist that activity. So again, you can go a lot deeper uh, on this in the Eagles Club for those of you that are in the Eagles Club or you can, you can buy that CD uh, somewhere. If you can't find it on the website, I don't have a link or anything to send you. If you can't find it on the website, let us know. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll send you where you, can, where you can get it. Or you just take a two-month free trial in the Eagles Club and go listen to it for free. All right, number eight. Commit to responsibility, right? Your responsibility, not blame. I realized when I was doing the notes on uh, Thursday for the webinar, Blame, if you, if you break it out, it, it says be lame. So don't be lame. How real does your team feel in NCAA Football 14? So real, you'll think you're running the perfect option play and turning on the afterburners past the secondary. It's so real, you'll start to question reality itself. Is time real? Is my couch real? Is this my real voice? No. Actually, this is. So go get your hands on the all-new high-speed, smash-mouth, mind-blowing, adjective-compiling physics that makes your team feel real. For reals. NCAA Football 14. Ready to be for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. Ten years is a long time. A hundred thousand miles is a long way. So choose the right car. The Elantra. It carries Hyundai Assurance with America's best warranty. Check out the Elantra during the Hundred Thousand Reasons event and spend your next hundred thousand miles with us. Whatever. Whatever result you're getting that you're not liking, I want you to put this question in front of it. How am I creating all these people not showing up? Because that's going to get your mind thinking about something different. It's going to get your mind focused on potential solutions rather than all the problems, right? How am I creating this? Because then you want to ask yourself, how can I uncreate that? So what can I do differently? How can I change the magnet? How can I change myself that I will start attracting people who are going to show up more? Attracting people who have you know, a similar definition of what integrity is and whatever. And here's a key piece here. I love this concept. There is no wrong answer. If you ask somebody to join your business and they say no and you decide that that's the wrong answer, then you're going to have a fear of getting the wrong answer. But if they say yes and you decide, or if they say no rather, and you decide that that's the right answer, then there's nothing to be afraid of. So what if you just decided that no matter what anybody says, it's the right answer? You literally could not have any fear if there was no such thing as a wrong answer. And, and to help with that, you know, just imagine anybody that says no to you, imagine they would be like a total energy vampire. They would create all these challenges in your business. And at some point in time, you would wish they would have never joined anyway. Just imagine that they would have turned into that and you'll actually get excited that they said no because they helped you avoid all of those challenges and all those hardships, right? All right, number nine, commit to enjoying the journey. Those of you that have been around me for any amount of time, you know I say this phrase all the time, enjoy the journey. Don't commit to just achieving the destination. When you enjoy the journey, you'll achieve more of the destinations, right? You'll achieve more of the goals. And I got into that where this is the destination and this is the journey. If you can find excitement and fulfillment in the process, the game is pretty much won. Right? And that's the difference here between fulfillment and success. You know, because success usually means getting the goals. Success usually means 
achieving the destination the way most of us are programmed. But what I want you to do is I want you to redefine what success is and success now means enjoying the journey and being fulfilled all along the way. Because here's my thought. We only get one shot on this planet and if we can't enjoy every single day of what we're doing, why are we doing it? So I think you either need to do one of two things. You need to quit what you're doing or you need to find a way to, 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 to love what you're doing. One of those two things, right? Quit it or learn to love it. Because what's the point? Why would you continue going on a journey that you don't enjoy just so that you can try to get to some destination and then what happens? Then when you get to that destination, what do you do then? Then you have to sign up for another process, another journey that you're not going to enjoy so that you can get these, you know, these intermittent, um, short-term, short-lived situations of quote-unquote success. And most of the time that's going to be hollow anyway. Don't play that game. Enjoy every single step you take. Every single step you take. Enjoy it. Because we don't know if we're waking up tomorrow morning. Hopefully we all do, right? But we don't know. That's the lesson that I learned when I was 13 years old. We don't know. And if we don't know, then you might as well do everything you possibly can to enjoy this journey. Somebody on the webinar last time, Naya, said basically something just like that. She's like, you know what? I had a moment where I just realized if this was my last day on earth, I will not, I will not experience it like this. And she changed the game. And another uh, friend and client of mine Shannon, this month and a half ago, she was not on pace to achieve her car. And it was really freaking her out. And so we went through a lot of these things we were already talking about. And this was the big deal for her. That was her big value that she had forgotten. She had put fun down because she was focused on the destination. She said, you know what, every single day I'm committing to fun. And because she committed to fun, the destination happened. And she, she wrote me a few days ago, and she said something like, um, because I committed to the process, the results happened to us, or something like that. I wish I could remember exactly. I love the way she worded it. But it was something like when she took her focus on, uh, off, the, off the results and put it on the journey, the results just showed up. Really, really cool. So that's fulfillment versus success. Number 10. I want not constantly we have to do something every single day without fail. We can't take any days off, right? We have to warm chat, you know, 10 people every single day Monday through Sunday. This is not a proposition that your unconscious mind likes at all. Doing something all the time with no flexibility. So don't program yourself that you need to do something all the time, but you've got to be consistent. Consistent might be, you know, once every few days, but you've got to be consistent. One of my favorite there, you know, don't land your plane. If your goal is to make 20 phone calls and stuff happens where you've got to put out some fires and you don't have the time to make 20 phone calls, make one. If you can make one phone call, then your plane stays in the air. But as soon as your plane lands and then you start getting comfortable being out of motion, it's going to be harder to get the plane to take off again. Right? The more that you're out of motion, the more you're going to stay out of motion. So do anything you possibly can every single day to at least keep the plane in the air. If your goal is to you know, exercise 30 minutes a day or 30 minutes five days a week or whatever it is and you don't have the time, just do five sit-ups. Seriously, five sit-ups is better than not doing 100 sit-ups. I would rather you do five than not do 100. Okay? So keep your plane in the air and it's going to lead to more consistency because here's the thing. Oh, I love this. Momentum is exponential in both directions, especially in direct sales. The longer you stay out of motion and you stay stagnant, the more momentum is being built up against you. When you stay in motion, the, mo the more momentum is being built up with you, in your favor. You know, the wave is helping you. So momentum is exponential. That's why it's so important to keep your plane in the air. Number 11. 
How are we doing on chat, everybody? Let's see. Let's check in here for a second. Oh, I think my plane landed. You got to get it back up. Absolutely. Yeah. Enjoy the journey. Commit to fun. Number 11. Commit to... Let's see. What is that? Oh, commit to efforts. Not... Um, not achievements. That's what it is. Couldn't find that word. We've already gone through this. Uh, I kind of went ahead of, uh, ahead of myself, and you want to judge yourself on your efforts, not judge yourself on your achievements. And here's what I know. It only matters if you really go for it, right? Can you look back on your life and say, I went for it? If you can, then you'll feel good about your effort. If you can't look back and say that you went for it, and all you did is try to commit to all the achievements, but you really didn't just jump in and give it everything you got, you won't feel fulfilled. You, you, won't, you won't be in integrity with yourself. This is all that matters. Go for it. So now, your effort is the new definition of success, not your achievements. Your effort is the new definition of success. You are successful if you give it your all and you go for it. You don't have to get anything to be successful. You just have to go for it. If you redefine what success is in terms of effort, you'll be good. Number 12, commit to fundamentals, not shortcuts. When people are focused on outcomes, when they're focused on getting approval, when they're focused on all these other things that we've been talking about, uh, they're, they're tempted by shortcuts right? Just like Katie could have been tempted by just putting that 24th one in. That, that's a shortcut. That wasn't a fundamental. And I believe like the very next day somebody called her out of the blue that she'd been trying to get a hold of for months and asked if she could join the business, right? And I believe it's because Katie stuck to her integrity that that person showed up. And she's starting the year with some, with some really good momentum because of that. So don't fall into this shortcut uh, temptation that a lot of people have and when you really stick to the fundamentals in business you know there's nothing that you're missing right you're not missing anything don't search for the latest and greatest magic bullet that so-and-so has been doing in her business you're not missing anything you're not missing anything personally and you're not missing anything from a skill set perspective unless you're brand new in the business you know of course there are things for you to, to learn but I know people who've been in the business 15 years and they're still trying to learn the things that they think they don't have. I don't know how many times over the last several months I've told my coaching clients, listen, you don't have to learn anything new. As a matter of fact, I wish I could go into your brain and scoop out 75% of your knowledge right now. If we could do that and you just implemented the fundamentals instead of continuing to search for what you think is missing, we're good, right? So nothing's missing. Commit to the fundamentals. We've only got a few more minutes here, guys. Uh, three more. And then we'll turn it over to q and I'll also talk, uh, tell you about how you can work with me um, in a new program that we've got coming up here in a moment. So what I want you to do is commit to a higher vision. The cool thing is, because I've been explaining these a lot in depth, uh, I've already explained a lot of these concepts. Commit to a higher vision, not just a common goal. A common goal uh, is, you know, the, the tangible stuff, the ego stuff, the intellectual stuff. But your higher vision is the thing that drives you. It, that's the thing that really speaks to your heart. When you're focused higher than the common goals, you've got, uh, you, you've just got so much more energy, right? You've got so much more uh, ability to overcome any of the obstacles that are in your way because the obstacles are small compared to a higher vision, right? but the obstacles are big compared to smaller goals. So commit to a higher vision, and what vision does is it really fuels you to move into the activities that will get the goals. Without the vision, you don't have the deeper fuel to do the activities. All you can do is try to motivate yourself. I, I, I talked a lot about that early on. Number 14, commit to duplication. This is specifically for you and Mary Kay. Commit to duplication, 
Don't commit to do it for them. A lot of people, directors specifically, especially, get really upset because their people aren't independent. But most of the time when we dig into that, what we realize is their people are not independent because they didn't let them grow. Right? If you want independent people, you must cultivate independence. You must set them up to be independent. Right? Let them do things for themselves. Let them learn along the way. If you really truly want independent people, you've got to cultivate it. But what a lot of people do is they think, well, they'll just, you know, do things for the new consultant and then at a certain point in time, just be able to let him go. Right? I think I used this analogy on Thursday. You know, that's like doing your homework for your child up through sixth grade and all of a sudden in seventh grade, you're like, okay, you're a big kid now, you start doing the homework. How's he going to start doing the homework? You've been doing it for him for seven years, right? He doesn't even know how to and you set up the precedent and the habit that you'll always do it for them. So there's no reason for them to be independent. Now, it doesn't mean you just push them out of the nest and they're either going to learn to fly or they're going to splat. That doesn't mean that you don't do anything with them or you don't train them. It's not what I'm saying. But too many people go overboard here and you mother them too much and you incubate them too much. And that's why they, uh, they don't have the, the independent drive because you squashed it out of them. So you're actually doing a disservice to people when you do too many things for them because that's how people get confident. The only way for somebody to build confidence is to do something and feel good about it, right? And systems here are critical. All throughout your business, if you want duplication, you've got to have systems. I won't go too much into that. I just wanted to mention that. So now the 15th one here is you must be willing to commit to doing whatever it takes instead of as fast as I can. Most people are trying to go as fast as they can. And I understand. If you want something, you want it now. So I get it, you know, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't want to go relatively quick, but you should be more committed to doing whatever it takes, no matter how long it takes, rather than do everything to just get it done fast. Because if you just get it done fast, more often than not, you're not going to do it properly. You're not going to set it up foundationally. It's not going to be long term. It's not going to be sustainable and so forth. But whatever it takes, though, is really what it's about. You got to be willing to do the fundamentals. And you've got to be in it for the long haul. You know, whatever you got to do, if your dream is big enough, you'll have a whatever it takes mentality. If it's not big enough, you'll probably have, let me just get through this as fast as I can mentality, right? And here's the reality. How real does your team feel in NCAA football 14? So real, you'll think you're running the perfect option play and turning on the afterburners past the secondary. It's so real, you'll start to question reality itself. Is time real? Is my couch real? Is this my real voice? No. Actually, this is. So go get your hands on the all-new high-speed, smash-mouth, mind-blowing, adjective-compiling physics that makes your team feel real. For reals. NCAA football 14. Ready to be for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. At Southern California Edison, an Edison international company, we want you to have the information you need to help keep you and your family safe around electricity. If you see a downed power line, remember, do not approach or touch the line or anything in contact with the line, and call 911 immediately. At Southern California Edison, we work hard and safely every day to provide you with reliable power. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. You're going to get there and you're going to stay there. That's what's important, I think, is staying time, not just getting there and falling away, right? So in the Mary Kay world, you know, if you want to be a director, if you want to be a national, if you want to get on, you know, if you, if you want to earn the trip, if you want to get to a certain unit club or whatever, you've got to be willing to 
go after the very things that most people are trying to avoid, right? So you can't be committed to success in Mary Kay and at the same time committed to avoiding rejection. You can't do that. If you want to be committed to success in Mary Kay, you've got to be committed to rejection. If you want to be committed to the goal, you must be committed to the recipe that's necessary in order to get the goal. So seek out rejection. You can't be committed to avoiding people who are not going to show up at your meeting and be committed to success at the same time. I mean, so think about all the things that, that most people are committed not to have happen in their business, right? And you might not think of it this way, that you're really committed to avoid rejection, but that's what your actions are telling you. If you're not making phone calls, then you're more committed to avoiding rejection than you are to growing your business or that you are to sharing an opportunity. So when it comes right down to it, your commitment is going to be exposed by your activities, right? By your actions. And you're going to be more committed to safety or you're going to be more committed to growth. And if you're more committed to safety, you can't grow, period. So when I asked people the other day, what are the things that they wish were different in their business? They said things like, I wish people had integrity. I wish people showed up at the meetings. I wish people did what they say they're going to do. I wish people would just, you know, order inventory. I wish people would follow through. I wish people wouldn't quit. I wish this, I wish that. Listen, all of those things are a necessary piece of the recipe. You cannot have the outcome of the recipe without the entire recipe. You will not find a national sales director in the entire company that hasn't dealt with and moved through every single one of those. Not some of them, every single one of those. You probably won't find a successful director that hasn't dealt with every single one of those. So if you want the outcome, you must also want the journey. So I want you to not try to avoid those, those negative things. I want you to embrace them and I actually want you to seek them out. If you became a quote unquote failure seeker, if you sought out more people to tell you no, your success would go through the roof. If you tried to find more people who were going to tell you they were going to come to your meeting and then they don't show, if the more of those people you find, the more of the other people you're going to find. So the more that you seek out the very things that you're trying to avoid, the more successful you're going to become. That's a huge mind shift that you know most people, uh, most people just don't take. All right, whoo! Let's check in. How are we doing on the chat roll? Yeah, commitment will be exposed by your activity. Rainine, well said. Absolutely. Uh, okay. So hopefully this has been helpful. I'm going to stick around and, and do some live Q&A. We'll get into the chat roll here in a second. But before I do, I want to tell you a little bit about an opportunity that I've got coming up uh, where you can work with me personally. I haven't done anything this way in the Mary Kay world for about a year and a half, I believe, where I did like a live uh, group coaching program. And, uh, but I'm doing it again. And it's all about starting strong and, and that's why I'm doing it right now at the beginning of the year so that you can start your year off better. Oh, I want to tell you this though, this is one of my favorite concepts as well. The journey will not be easy. If you're the kind of person that is committed to easy, you will not be successful. But what I promise you is that the journey, if you're playing a big enough game, the journey will be worth it. And if your goals don't scare you a little bit, if your vision doesn't scare you a little bit, and it's probably not big enough and it's probably not worth it, right? So here's a program that I've got. It's going to start in August. After you guys get through the whole seminar season, uh, we're going to start this program and it's going to be called Whatever It Takes Live. It's a group coaching program. I will be leading people through the program. Uh, there's going to be eight calls and we're going to go much deeper. We're going to go deeper into goal getting. We're going to talk about how to set up support. I'm going to walk you through how to design your game plans using your activities and all that stuff. This is going to be a big portion of it. We're going to talk about momentum. How do you build the momentum both personally and how can you create momentum in your business to where start feeding off themselves and they start creating that, that surge. I can't do any kind of training in Mary Kay.
The whole course is going to be a lot on mindset. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, because that's the whole thing. I mean, that's, that's the name of the game. I think your mindset is probably going to determine 95% of your results. It's not your skill set. Your skill set is, is fine. You could take the current level of skills you have and attach a higher level of, of mindset and explode your results, right? So this is the thing that causes most people to fall off the path and it causes the most amount of frustration and all that sort of stuff. So it's going to be whatever it takes live, eight weekly phone calls. We're going to do one call every week. So it's going to be a two-month program that's going to get you moving in the right direction and get you started strong for the seminar year. We've got a couple bonuses or several bonuses for it. I mentioned the Eagles Club. It's our group coaching program. You get CDs every month. You get other phone calls every month. With me, you're going to get two free months in the Eagles Club if you haven't already gotten the Eagles Club. You get two free months on that. Um, after the program's over, you get a one-on-one -on -one implementation call with one of our coaches. That'll help you take everything that you learn in the program and implement it specifically to you. Because if you don't implement it specifically to you and take a look at how it's showing up in your life and what are the individual things you can do, then all the information in the world is not going to really matter, right? So this is going to be a really valuable implementation call. You're going to get three extra laser coaching calls. These are with me. This is where I'm just going to get on the phone and help you out as much as I possibly can. Um, everybody is on the call but it's basically going to be one-on-one. -on -one. So if you get on the call and you have a specific issue, I'm going to laser coach you one-on-one -on -one as best I can and help you move through whatever emotional issue you have or whatever challenge you're having. And I'm going to do that you know, as much as I can on, on these calls with as many people as possible. So these are three live laser coaching calls. These are with me personally. I've also asked a woman named Margie Alaprandi to do a live Q&A call with you as well. Now Margie is an icon in the direct sales world. Um, she has over 250,000 people on her team right now. And in the past, she had as many as like over a half a million before some of the economic things happened around the world. Uh, she, if there's anybody who really knows what it takes to be successful in business and to do it the right way, it's Margie. And if you know anybody who was at the coaches camp with me two or three months ago, Margie was there for the entire week they'll they'll tell you there's you know there's something about that woman that is just so magnetic and so attractive and that's why she did what she did in the direct sales world and she had the results because she got the inner game first so i've asked margie to do a q and a call with everybody in this in this program she doesn't even do coaching calls like that the total of all these bonuses is well over a thousand bucks but i want you to consider this program not, you know, what is it going to cost you or the time out that, you know, it might take. It's, you know, what can you get out of it? What, what is, what's the possible return, right? Here's the investment of the program. I'm trying to do everything that I can to make it very, very simple. So we've got two options. You've got a full pay option right now at $97. I say right now because after the seminar season, uh, we're going to bump the price up. Or really, the next time I even offer this, we're going to bump the price up to probably at least 127 or 157 I, I haven't decided yet. Uh, because I think it's really a steal at, at only 97 bucks, Two months of coaching, a total of 12 calls. You know, if you really implement some of this stuff, your, your business will dramatically change. But if you need a payment plan, there's also a payment plan of $57.00 times two uh, if, if that's what you need. Here's the website. And you know what? Let me do this. Let me, let me type this in here so that you can actually just click on the link for any of you that are interested in going here. Hang on a sec. Uh, let's see. www pink caddy sorry my computer is not keeping up pinkcaddycoach.com slash wit live wit is whatever it takes live so it's a live group coaching program with me uh, and margie's doing the one call 
And my intention for this program is that we help you avoid the mistakes that a lot of people are trying to recover from, you know, towards the end of the year. So we're going to do everything that we can to get your business rocking. And what most people do that are thinking with a scarcity mentality and thinking with a lack mentality is they'll ask themselves the question, what's the cost of you know doing this program whether it's this program specifically with me or what's the cost of going to seminar or what's the cost of of uh, opening a, a, a Mary Kay business or what's the cost of whatever right anytime that you see an opportunity and your default question is what's the cost of doing that opportunity you're thinking from the wrong perspective you're thinking from the perspective of keeping yourself safe and stagnant right because what you're, what you're saying to yourself and what you're asking yourself is, if I take action, what are all the bad things that might happen? Meaning, I might lose some money. I might waste some time. It might not work. So if you're thinking from, where can I keep myself safe and avoid losing money or avoid it not working, what you're more committed to in that moment is your safety and your comfort zone, right? Now, that doesn't mean, obviously, you jump at every opportunity, but I just want you to have a better question, right? So the better question is, what's the cost of not taking action? So for most people, if they don't take action and they just stay where they are, that's more painful than losing $97 if it doesn't work for you or than losing, you know, $400 $800, whatever the cost is, to go to seminar, to jump on a plane, to get into a room and, and to take all the time out and stuff. That's the way that people think when they're more committed to their safety than they are growth. They think of, why should I not do this? Because that's basically, at, at, at the core of that question is, why should I not do this? But if you ask this question, you're going to say, if I don't take action, if I don't go for it, what will happen? And for most people, there's actually a bigger risk on not taking action than taking action. So for this program, it's 97 bucks or $57 times two. There's a 30-day unconditional guarantee from when the program starts. So give us 30 days if you don't think we're delivering. And that's four phone calls. You can watch, you can, you can pay attention to four phone calls and if you don't think I'm delivering on everything that I set out to, if you don't think it's the best thing that you've ever experienced in terms of, you know, in, in terms of changing your mindset, if, if you just don't, you know, just don't want to hang around for whatever reason, then ask us to give your money back and we'll refund your full amount. So I don't want you to feel like, you know, there's any risk on the hesitation here, but think of it this way. If you invest 97 bucks, and you learn how to recruit one more person over the course of the next year or one more decent sale over the course of the next year the entire program pays for itself and that's what I want you to think about and if you don't believe that we can help you shift even if it's a tiny shift right it's the principle of slight edge if you can if you can make a slight improvement what are the benefits in your business? Now you're in business, so if you do things a little bit differently and your business starts to explode, I mean, we could be talking about when you tweak some of the things that might not be going right for you right now. Now, if you don't believe that you can make some of these shifts and earn an extra $97 in your business, then please don't join, right? If you don't believe that I can help you, earn $98 or more, please don't join, right? And, and I'll be the first one to say that if you don't see the value in it, then this is not for you, and that's totally fine. But if you see the value and you want us, myself and Margie, to, to put our hands on your business a little bit more and help you clear away some of the challenges you might be having and help you redirect your focus a little bit, you know, change the course of the sales a little bit, and how
At Aetna, we want to know, what's your healthy? It's getting... off the couch it's getting on the bike it's uh, getting access to the right care no matter what your healthy is we have the tools to help you get there etna what's your healthy incredibly empowering in your business and your life you'll feel better you'll do better you'll make more money everything can shift in your life externally when you make some of these internal changes and so forth so um, if this is as far as you're gonna go with us if this is enough, if you don't want to do the program for whatever reason, then hopefully I've you know, given you some level of service here. Hopefully I've given you some nugget that, can take, that you can take into your business and you can explode your results. But if you want more, if you want to go deeper, I mean, imagine you know, what we did in about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes tonight. Imagine what happens when you're on the phone now for 12 hour, hour and a half, two hour phone calls and we go deeper and we go into some of the exercises that helps you get to some of these awarenesses, uh, I really truly believe this program will change your life. And if it didn't, I wouldn't be offering it, you know? So that's the opportunity. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna take a drink of water, first of all. And I am going to probably invade your personal space a little bit, because I have to have access to my computer now. Uh, let's see. If you have questions, so I want to I wanna do as much as I can to answer the questions on the chat roll. And if you join the program, let us know. Uh, I want to welcome you into the program here. So has anybody already joined the program tonight? Bernadette says, will we be able to register tomorrow? Uh, yes. You'll be able to register tomorrow. Um, yeah, but here, you know, I forgot about this. We have a first 75 going on right now. We did it on the webinar on Thursday, but we, um, we actually had a lot of traffic come to the website, and there were some issues with the, with the page and so forth. So... A lot of people weren't able to get in. Um, so we're extending that. And from this webinar or this live stream tonight, uh, we've got a special for the first 75 people. And it's basically the first 75 from this point forward. It doesn't have, it, like everybody that, that was in on Thursday, they're not going to count because I knew there'd be a lot more people on this live stream that you know, just didn't come on Thursday. And I wanted to give you guys a couple, you know, a couple options. But Hey, for those of you that showed up, I know a lot of you showed up for the second time tonight. I want to incentivize you. So for the first 75 people that join um, from basically the beginning of this broadcast on, so, that, so the first 75 could be gone tonight. It, it could take a couple days, I don't know. But for the first 75, we're going to add an additional bonus of over $100 worth of, um, of trainings on fear. I found myself talking about fear a lot lately, and I've got a ton of CDs with um, all focused on fear from all kinds of different directions. So we're gonna add a about $160 worth of our trainings on fear for the first 75 people that get in. So that's the only urgency, really. Uh, well, you know, in a couple weeks we'll raise the price, but that's the urgency. So if I, I, like I see some of you say, I have to wait till Wednesday. I have to wait till tomorrow or whatever. Uh, that's fine. I'm not going to turn anybody away. We don't have a certain number of people for the program, uh, but we just have the, in the incentive. I mean, I'm all about, you know, some of you might think, oh, he's just, you know, trying to add all these bonuses to get me to join the program. Absolutely I am. That's exactly what I'm trying to do because I think this will change your life and I want your life to be changed, right? Because this is the kind of stuff that totally changed my life. And I know how my relationship is different with my wife. I know how my relationship with my kids are different with myself. I mean, this is truly life-changing information. And I unabashedly am doing everything I possibly can to get you in. Uh, because I know this is, this is uh, really going to help. So, anyway. Let's see. Let, let, me, let me scroll up a little bit. 
Let me scroll up a little bit because I, I saw a lot of people say, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Cheryl Bowman is in. Uh, Lauren says she's signing up now. Katie, Tammy, Lloyd, I'm registered. Welcome, Tammy. Come on in. Uh, Lisa says, will the live calls be during the day or in the evening? They will generally be in the evening. I might mix in some of the laser coaching calls uh, in the day, one or two, but they're all going to be recorded, so you won't miss anything. But what we found is that the evening times are usually easier for people to join live. So that's what we're gonna. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. I like to put things on the fifteenth. Yeah, I know a lot of directors. You got the issue of money coming in on the fifteenth. Joyce says, "I'm seventy-three, with less energy than some of these beautiful women. Will this be high energy?" Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. One of the things I really didn't talk about is, is what whatever it takes means. You know, whatever it takes is not this rah rah gung ho. And just you know, beat beat your head against the path and and do everything. It means whatever it takes for you. So some of you are not in a situation where you have 30 hours to work your business, and that's great. So what we have to do is find out not only what goals are going to appeal to you and what your specific drivers are, but what are your activities. I'm not, this is not a one size fits all approach. You know, I don't believe that everybody should have the same, the same goals and the same game plan. So it's whatever it takes for you. I want to help you identify what your drivers are, what your game plan needs to be for you, what your definition of time management is, you know, just everything has to be unique to you. So that's another piece of whatever it takes. I thought it was still um, behind me. It's whatever it takes for you. So if you're in a situation where you don't have as much time, you don't have as much energy, you don't have the same desire, you don't have these pie, you know, in the sky goals of becoming 18 hours or whatever, and I'm not making fun of that. I'm just saying if you don't have you know, these really super high goals compared to everybody else, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you have a vision for yourself. And if that's where you are, no matter what age you are, no matter how much time you have, my commitment to you is to help you find something that's personalized to you and helps you enjoy your journey, not helps you get something compared to everybody else. So hopefully that, that helps. I'm really glad you asked that question. All right, let's see. Somebody said, oh, I got a commercial. I missed the info on the first 75. Uh, if, you've been a, if you've been on the live stream, most of you should actually have the button that showed up. I think it was supposed to show up like after an hour or an hour and a half, something like that. Most of you should have a button on the right side that's, that explains what the first 75 are. The first 75 people get uh, $160 worth of fear training, how to get rid of fears. And that's going to go from now until those 75 spots are taken. Taylor says, what's a good way to approach people and start talking to them when you're just starting out? You know, I don't think it changes when you're just starting out versus when you've been in, in, in the, in the uh, sorry, in, in for a long time, Taylor. It's, you, you got to approach people the same way. You got to approach them and try to in connect with them. Like I said earlier, don't try to impress them. But here's the thing, you got to find out what they want. You know, don't try to try to, uh, imagine what they want according to what you want. You got to find out what they want and then offer them and be willing to walk away if what they want in their life doesn't have Mary Kay involved in it, right? But if they do want something that Mary Kay can help them out with, then that's when you offer it to them. So it's always about them. It's, it's what can you do to help them out. And I'm a big favor or a big fan of um, just starting out with what I call watering flowers, right? Just tell them you know, give them some kind of compliment. Hey, your dress looks cool. You own the room. Your, your smile is awesome. You just got an energy that's so cool. You know, when you start conversations like that, uh, people feel really good about themselves. and It's a great way to connect. So it really doesn't matter whether you're starting out or not. It doesn't matter if you've gotten any of your goals or not. You can still connect with people. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, Ashley, you're logging off for family time. Cool, Ashley, I totally, uh, totally respect that. Jim, registered. Jim, my man. Many of you know Jim. Um, first male to ever hit $650,000 this year. 
and he attributes a lot of that to these kinds of concepts and going more internal and focusing on responsibility and so forth. So, um, pleasure to have you in, buddy. You, you know how I feel about you. I think you're amazing. Yvette, I'm registered. Cool. Welcome. Nora, registered. You're in. Awesome. Uh, Brandy says, we do it with inventory bonuses, so why not? Yeah, I think you're probably referring to bonuses of, you know, how can, how can we help you take action? Registered, Lauren, awesome. Let's see, Cindy, Cindy, uh, I wish I could tell where you guys are from. Cindy's registered and in, Stephanie registered. Lisa, time of day makes a difference. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna do the best we can. Our experience is that the evening calls are the easiest for people to join and I'll look into my calendar. Maybe I can do them on Sunday evenings as, as my, my calendar is such that I can't do it consistently on the same day and time over the next eight weeks. I just don't, you know, any eight week period of time. Um, I'm flying places. I'm, you know, I've got week long seminars here and there sprinkled around. So we will do the best we can to make it available. Well, it'll be available to everybody. So even if you can't make all the calls, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have the recordings available. How do you delay the payment till Wednesday? Um, you know, there's really no way to delay the payment. You know what? Here, send an email to this address, info at pinkcaddycoach.com. Um, I don't know if we can do this. My wife might be able to, to tell me if she's still on. I don't know if she's still on. Um, if we can actually order and, and, and have the payment delayed, I, I don't think we can. But if we can, we'll do it for you. Like if you just commit to it. But if we can delay the payment, uh, we'll try to do that. I don't know if we can do that. All right. Um, yeah, Brandy says, I've seen Jim's success. I'm totally in. Yeah, any of you that's watched Jim over the last few years and watched him sit on, uh, sit on the throne last year at seminar, uh, it's been a, a wonderful ride. Jeannie, Tribe, I'm in. So excited. Cool. Did I see correctly? Amy says that the calls will be recorded if we're able to be on live. Absolutely. Yvette, you can't get this level and quality of coaching for this price. Well, I uh, humbly agree with you. Kate, this is going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, cool, Kate. I'll be a part of this. Uh, Raineen, yep. No worries, no worries. Just jump on in. This is a perfect way to get pumped up for seminar. Yeah, Nora, I agree. Brandy says, can you re-answer a question about what you spoke about, please? Yes, but I don't know what that question was. So if you retype it in here, Brandy, I'll see it. I'm, I'm delayed in the chat roll here. I'm trying to get caught up here. Uh, but I'm a little bit delayed. Several people are saying that you'll be joining this week or next week. Yeah, like I said, I mean, that's cool. You know, I can't promise that the, that the bonus will still be there, but. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is a great question. Um, Anna Garcia says, how is this different from effortless leadership that I just purchased? It, you know, a lot of the concepts, honestly, there's going to be some crossover with just about anything that I teach because a lot of the fundamentals are the fundamentals. But Effortless Leadership was deep dive specifically for, uh, for directors or people in DIQ, specifically for leadership. So we went a lot more in the leadership aspect, and I'm sure leadership will come up a little bit on these calls. But these calls are more about the, the nuts and bolts of your business and really creating a foundation. It's just a little bit deeper in the goal setting and the momentum and you know just the, the business side of of your business and of starting strong now i will say this if you feel that it's just nothing but a duplicate then please let us know and we'll refund your money so i mean i certainly wouldn't feel good about you investing you know another 97 dollars and feeling like you just basically got the same stuff but here's the other thing i'm intentionally making it a little looser in terms of the curriculum because some of the things that i teach are going to be based on what you all want to hear or how you're implementing or what you're struggling with with the stuff that we've already taught. So there's going to be a lot more uh, collaboration on this one and in terms of what I teach. It's like we're going to co-create this 
along the way a little bit more than I did with, uh, with effortless leadership. So that's a great question, Anna. Thank you for that. Okay, Brandy, as for driver versus action, your drivers are the whys that motivate you. The emotional oil, correct? Yes. Uh, most people are trying to motivate themselves into action, but when you find your drivers, you're going to be inspired. That's the difference. It's, it's motivation versus inspiration. Your drivers inspire you from within. People couldn't stop you if they tried to get in your way. Right? With motivation, you always have to motivate yourself you know, and, and offer yourself carrots or shame. or A family that vacations together, sunscreens together. Find a Hilton everywhere you want to go with rates as low as $109 per night. Book now at Hilton.com slash getaway. For over 75 years, people have saved money with... Oh, oh, sorry. From the top. For over 75 years... <laughs> Keep it together. <laughs> what are you doing there? Stop making Geico. Up. Saving people money for over 75 years. Good to see your name and face again. I know we've reconnected a little bit. Uh, really, really cool to see you. Brandy, I have a DIQ who is so close. She's part of our national area that's finishing August 1st. However, I can't figure out her why. It doesn't bring her to tears. How do I get her to find her true why? I would do the exercise that I mentioned where you just basically ask her why is blank important to her. So if she says she wants to finish DIQ, you say, why is that important? And it'll just go deeper and you just become like this little three-year-old and whatever she says, you just keep questioning. Why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? Sometimes people get a little frustrated by that line of questioning because, you know, they have to keep answering. Um, but that's the only way to get people to go deep. Just why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? So that's what I would do. And she doesn't necessarily have to cry, but uh, she'll tap into some emotion that she probably never tapped into before. Karen registered. Awesome. Welcome, Karen. Amy registered Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. So those of you that are, that are popping in and saying that you're registered, tell me where you're from. Virginia, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Awesome. Uh, Brenda says, my plane has parked and it's time to get it in the air. Boy, I, yeah, let's, let's get that in the air. I'm so excited and glad that I tuned in. Thanks for the advice and information. You're welcome. Brenda, Houston, Texas. Good old Houston. New Providence, New Jersey for Nora. Awesome. Uh, Kimberly says she has let us know to call the office on the day for the payment. Yeah, so you can call our office and we can take care of this for you. Um, is there a key to a great party? Yeah, fun. Have fun, Taylor. I really do believe that the most important thing is genuine fun. I think that's what most people are missing out on in their life is um, that they're really truly not having fun. And you can fake fun but people usually can get a sense that it's fake. So I wouldn't fake fun. And you really have fun when you do all this stuff that we've been talking about. Okay, Tammy, I'm in. Awesome, Tammy. Can't get enough. Yes, me neither. How do I register? Alva, uh, you register. Yeah, there you go. Regina, a couple spots down, sent that link. The chat world is going so fast, so the links that we're sending are getting taken care of. And I'm not saying stop chatting. I love all this chatting. Uh, let's see. Alva says, the section on the page to click is not there anymore. Where do I go? So go to that link that somebody just sent. That's how to get to that page. Joyce, I'm registered. Awesome, Joyce. Cool. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. Sorry, I called you uh, Anna, Karina. I apologize for that. I remember. I'm just looking at your, at your name here. Cool, Marjean, I'm finally in. Excellent. Brandy, you're answering my DIQ question, and I got a commercial. Oh, no. Well, hopefully you're back, Brandy. <laughs> uh, and I can answer it again later once I get caught up here. I'm focused on getting into DIQ by July 30th. Any suggestions? Yeah, Marlene, you know what? I wouldn't even focus on getting into DIQ or getting out of DIQ because in DIQ and out of DIQ, they're, 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 those aren't your drivers. You know, you, you should be focused on helping people. You should be focused on creating a business that lasts for your, excuse me, for yourself, for your family. Um, 
I wouldn't be focused on getting into or out of any position because like a lot of people in DIQ are focused on getting out of DIQ. Well, you don't ever want to get out of something unless you don't enjoy it. So what you're doing is you're placing non-enjoyment, you're placing irritation on DIQ and you're placing irritation on Mary Kay because DIQ is Mary Kay. So if you're telling yourself, I just got to really bust through this so that I can get, go beyond this, that irritation that you're placing on your business in that period of stress will almost all the time follow you throughout your business. So I think most people that become directors, they, if their business isn't good, I'm not, you know, and a ton of people have fantastic businesses, so I'm not saying, you know, I'm not putting this on all directors, but when people don't have a solid business, I would say about 80% of the time we can trace it back and they ruin their business in DIQ because they were so focused on getting out of DIQ. They were so focused on, on rushing to the finish line, right? And that's not fundamental. That's not sustainable. So I don't want you to try to get into or out of DIQ. I want DIQ to be something that just happens along the way of you fulfilling your drivers and you really fulfilling your purpose on this planet. And I know, you know, that's probably not, um, the way most people are looking at it. Now, obviously, you can track when you go into the IQ and all that stuff, but that should not be the focus. That because that's just a it's a condition. You know, it's a condition based on how many people you have in your in your uh, team and all that stuff. Conditions don't drive you. If they do drive you, it's usually a negative driver. Lauren, Tampa, Florida, awesome. Margine, Dillon, Florida. Alva, uh, I don't see, okay, I just see a name there. Um, Tampa, Florida from Lady Divine, it looks like. Team Joys says, hey, I'm definitely one who has set a goal and not achieved it, but I don't quit. How can I shift my mind and not allow the subconscious answer to the question of whether or not I can do it? You know, honestly, I wouldn't suggest you trying to shift your mind to avoid the answer. I would suggest you shift the question shift the focus so that the answer is going to be yes. Let me tell you, I was at, uh, we did a, a seminar, a five-day seminar called Coaches Camp, I don't know, seven, eight years, not years ago, seven, eight uh, months ago. And one of the women in the, in the camp said that she, when we were talking about this issue, said that she had a, a big thing about 150, you know, trying to get her unit to 150. And she'd been trying for that goal for a long time. And she just, you know, she had this negative irritation on 150. And I just said, well, why don't you just shoot for 149 or 151? And she was like, holy cow. All of her resistance went away. She shot another goal that she didn't have previous failure on. So sometimes it's as simple as that. And it's as simple as that. Sometimes it's looking deeper into the goal. You know, if getting into a Cadillac doesn't do it for you, but, um, you know, paving the, the path for your children to live a better life or your God-given purpose or something like that, maybe, that, maybe that'll do it for you. So I don't know what your answer is, but I know it, it's going to come from asking better questions, not trying to fool your mind into believing that you can do something that has all this negativity on it. Joy's jewels are. My Dodger fan, Joy. Awesome. Well, I miss you. I remember doing a lot of Karen Roberts, Prince George. I wonder, uh, I don't remember the name. Were you up in Prince George when I went up there? I was in Prince George, one of my very first Canadian cities up in Prince George up there. Gloria, Arizona, awesome. Registered last time, great. <laughs> if it's good enough for Jim, it's good enough for me. Michael Baker, I'm registered. Cool. Welcome, buddy. Let's see. Awesome to hear. Hey, Jim, I'm registered. Well, you guys have your own conversations going on, which is cool. I'm registered. I, and Okay, Sybil told me that your name... I just try to pronounce your name. It's like Afya, something like that, right? Afya, uh, if you could tell me if you're still on. Listen, everybody. Well, you all see it. She's in London. It's 4.30 in the morning. So and this is just the end. So, I mean, she's been up at like 2 or 2.30. I honor that so much. If there's a way for you to type in 
like how I can, um, you know, the phonics of how to say your name. I would, I would really appreciate that because I want to be able to say it correctly. And I remember Sybil saying it wasn't uh, the way that I thought it was. So cool. That is so, so cool. London, that's dedication. That is dedication, everybody. All right. Registered, registered, registered. Karina, registered. Alva, registered. Afina. E F O, Afia. Did I say it right? Afia. Afia. Hopefully, I'm saying it right. Well, welcome. And I'm caught up on the chat roll now, so if any of you have specific questions that I can answer, uh, yeah, it is an amazing commitment. If any of you have any specific questions I can answer, then I'll do my best. Otherwise, we can, uh, we can call it a night. Was this fun, everybody? Was this kind of cool? I know there were some challenges. There were some technology issues in the beginning. I know some of you had to deal with commercials. Oh, man, I thought I did everything that I needed to do to get commercials off the line, and, uh, and we didn't. So, you know, uh, Ustream has some splaining to do. Brandy, can you re-answer mine? DIQ question, yeah. So let me try to remember what it was. You have a DIQ, correct? And you want to try to help her get some... Uh, oh, there you go. Good. Copy and paste, right? It's... So what I was saying is that you, you can do the exercise that I was mentioning earlier. You just keep asking her, why is that important? You know, so she says, I want to become a director. And you say, why is that important? Why is that important? And she says, I want to, uh, you know, I want to make money. I want to pay the bills. I want to do whatever. You just keep asking, why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? It'll, usually people have about three levels of importance. You know, the first level of importance is more ego, intellect other people and then the third level of importance for most people it's it's more of like you know how can I help the world how can I serve the world how can I um, achieve my purpose on the planet and so forth so what we want to do is we want to help people get to those deeper levels of understanding and awareness and the way we do is you just keep questioning them so it, it sounds really simple but it's super powerful I can tell you that I've done this exercise with people who've been in Mary Kay for 20 years and they said I always knew what my why was but I never knew it went so deep or people start crying and you know and they just never n never went to the depths of connection and, you know and I'm not saying that this exercise is all about crying and you have to get all emotional but you've got to find that driver that is going to outweigh your fears your ego and your intellect does not have the power to outweigh any of the fears right so hopefully that helps that's what I would do just keep asking her uh, let's see, Laura, amazing training. I love that you're honest. No MK fluff. Well, thank you, Laura. I appreciate your appreciation of that. I'm just, I'm not a fluff guy, you know? It's like, you know what, we're here once. We might as well enjoy the journey. And if my mission is to help as many people as I can, then I need to speak my truth. And you know what, for a long time, I didn't. For, for the first couple of years, um, and it's in no way is it a Mary Kay issue or problem or whatever, but for a long time when I was even just speaking, not just in the Mary Kay world, I didn't speak my truth because I was concerned about people not liking me. I was concerned about, you know, people asking for their money back. I was concerned about all these things that would happen. So it caused me to not really be myself. And it was the lack of integrity that I talked about earlier that really got me to say, you know what, who cares? Because in the, in the end... I'm more concerned about my approval of myself in the mirror. Did I live my truth? Am I okay in front of you know, my creator and my God rather than does somebody else agree with my opinion or not? And that's when so many things really change in my life. You know, from a, from a business perspective, our business really took off when I was willing to irritate people. You know, people that don't believe what I have, what I believe, that's totally fine if they don't believe that and they're not going to show up at my events and they're not going to hire me as a coach and they're not going to show up and stay with me for a couple hours on live stream, right? And that's okay. And there's no negativity on that, right? I don't get into this I'm right, you're wrong argument, but I believe what I believe based on my experience and nobody can take, take, take that away from me. So if I 
share what I share based on my experience and based on what I truly believe to be true, then people are going to take it however they take it. And, you know, if that means that, that some people are going to get irritated at me, if people are going to tell on me, and, and there's been plenty of times in the past where people have mistaken my words, you know, and they think that I'm saying something I absolutely uh, I'm not saying that. You know, it's usually people that heard five minutes of a conference call and they never went to an event or they never actually listened, you know, to anything in depth. That's usually when they misjudge. But, um, but you know what? And this might sound a little selfish, but it's the truth. I, I just have, I, I've got to be true to myself. And I'm saying this, I'm going on and on about this because that's what you need to do too. Every single one of you, every single one of us has to be true to what we believe. And we need to speak what we believe to be truth you know, at the top of our lungs, you know, from the mountaintop, because that's the best that I think we can ask of ourselves and each other is to learn what we can learn about life and then help as many people as we possibly can by sharing what we believe to be true. So anyway, I went on a little bit about that because I know this is a big issue for a lot of people and it goes back to choosing your integrity over approval. <laughs> Yes, Joy, I know. We've been with each other. Imagine yourself in a stressless, a place for comfort with all the calm and relaxation you could ever imagine. A personal oasis of tranquility where time is your own and every movement is in slow motion. Imagine that peace of mind that begins with comfort. The comfort of stressless. Receive a free swing table or elevator ring with any stressless recliner plus an additional $300 off select sunrise recliners. Call now to find your local retailer and for a free catalog. Week right that just shifted her energy and she went after it so that and that's that's the other thing you know when you've been in personal development for a long time you've been in your business for a long time it are the it, it's the tiny shifts that are gonna make the big you know the big differences for you if you imagine to go with the plane analogy if you imagine you're on a plane you know from from Los Angeles to un, to London you know we're gonna go visit Afia out there in London hopefully I'm saying it right if you make a half a percent shift in your direction. If you go from here to here, a half a percent shift, by the time you get all the way out there, you'll, you'll never even get to London because that shift will, will take you an entirely different path, you know, when it's all said and done. By the time you're in the air for, you know, 13 hours or however long it takes to get out there, you know, you, you, you might be in Africa, right? It's just a tiny shift over the long haul creates huge differences, right? Tiny shifts. That's what I'm after in my life now. Tiny shifts, tiny shifts, right? So don't think that you've got to get like this big gigantic aha, the clouds part for you to, you know, make a, a difference in your life. It's these tiny shifts. Nicole, thanks so much. I'm registered. Awesome, Nicole. Uh, Tammy, yeah, it's interesting because Tammy was in one coach's camp. Jim was in another one, so I forget that you all don't, don't know each other. Um, cool, Marjean, this is fabulous for the short time I've been in, awesome. Kim, thanks for posting on Facebook. Oh cool, Kimberly came in because Jim posted on Facebook. That's fantastic. Uh, let's see, thank you so much. Never been asked why before. Taylor, yeah, that's, that's important, you know? Because what happens is people say, you know, what's your why? Your why has to make you cry. This is not a new concept in Mary Kay. But most people just don't go deep enough. And the way to find your why is actually to keep asking why, 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 why. Uh, but most people, they come up with a why that's like a regurgitated why or it's an ego why. You know, it's based on intellect. People say, you know, I really want to just do this for my family or whatever. Um, I remember one time one of my uh, ex-clients said that she wanted to become a national. And I asked her why. And she said, well, because of the payment plan and, you know, I want to retire and I want to travel the globe and blah, blah, blah no emotion whatsoever and I did this you know we, we were at a Denny's actually we were we were, we were uh, eating at a Denny's at one of we were at leadership or something like that and I just continued to ask her why 
And she started to tell me about the process of becoming a national and what it's going to mean to herself and her family. And she started talking about being backstage and seeing the look on her family's face and on her boy's face. And she starts crying. And this is somebody who had wanted to be a national for years and years and years and never tapped into the driver that she needed to, right? So we can all go deeper and tap into that. Uh, Brandy says, will you be at seminar? Um, no, I won't be at seminar. Seminar is too big of an ordeal for me. For me to go to seminar and be there for all the different divisions, I'd have to be out there for like three weeks. And uh, it's, you know, it's summertime for me. My kids are off. So I will not be going to seminar. Uh, Billy, this is amazing. I'm in. Cool. Billy, Joe, awesome. Joyce, ah, I love you, Joyce. You're, you're, you, you are a smile trigger for me. Kimberly says, you've given me an aha moment. Cool. Take that aha moment, Kimberly, and run with it. Just one little tiny aha moment uh, will absolutely work. Afia says, before I sign off, is this program suitable for consultants? Yeah, I really believe it is because uh, I'd rather them avoid the mistakes than recover from the mistakes. So I'd rather them learn the fundamentals ahead of time. I don't really believe that I'll be saying anything that you know, scares anybody away or anything like that. But it's, you know, it, it'll, it'll be preparation. And I think people need to be prepared for what might happen. I'm not going to be scaring them and saying, you know, this is the hardship that you're going to uh, come up against in your, in your business. But I think we're doing a disservice to people if we send them out into the world and they're not prepared for some of the things they might encounter. Because if they don't know what they might encounter, what happens is they get irritated and they might think you lied to them or you're withholding information from them or they might think they're doing it wrong. So I'm a big believer in preparing people for the truth so that when you know people say no or they, they don't show up at meetings or whatever, I'd rather give them the way to handle that beforehand as much as possible than try to help them recover from the emotional damage um, afterwards. So I absolutely believe it is suitable for consultants. Jim says, if I could have all my unit members in this program, it would be a game changer. Yep, most of the hookups are the seven inches between our ears. Uh, Jamie T, I'm registered here in Warren, Pennsylvania. Cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's see. Uh, Jamie, can't wait for this to start. Thank you for answering my questions. I really do appreciate it. I have a call with Sybil Tuesday. Cool, Taylor. You're going to... She's pretty awesome, that Sybil girl. Um, she's actually, I, she's been on here because she's amazing, um, work in the chat role in one of the other rooms in the house. Thank you, sweetie. I love you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Tuesday. You can, you can find your why on Tuesday. Absolutely. Lauren, I'm not a director and I feel this training is real and gives me a stronger base for my business. Yep, you're, you're responding to that consultant's question. i totally with you. This has been awesome. Bernadette, live stream training opportunity. Cool. So um, I love doing these things. You know, I, I love being on live. I, I love doing the webinars too, but I just always feel like there's a live energy. What I don't like about this is I can't hear you. You know, so maybe we find a platform out there where people can actually interact or I can unmute you like I can do on webinars and I can hear you. Um, I wish I could engage in the live stream a little bit more. On webinars, it's a lot easier because I'm sitting there just reading off the computer so I can see the, the, uh, the chat roll coming through and I can uh, you know, address them every now and then and so forth. It's, it's much harder to do that here. I can't even see because I've got to be a little further away from the computer. But I also I love this, this live energy. So, um, but what do you all think about this? Because I've been thinking of doing this a lot more. You know, I don't know what that looks like, maybe doing a live stream once a month or... I do Ask Me Anything calls over the phone, and I was thinking I could do Ask Me Anything calls as a live stream event like this, which is pretty cool. The downside is that a lot of people emailed us and asked what number they could call in on on their phone because they don't have, um, they don't have like internet service or what have you. And unfortunately, I don't believe that's possible. It, I, I don't know of a way, but um, when I call this particular provider, Ustream, and ask them why there are commercials in my feed, 
then I can also ask them if there's a phone number uh, that, you know, that, that people can call in. So Cheryl says, I like this. So many don't feel connected. So yeah, you know, what that you were, you know, that, that right, as, as much as possible. But I'd love a little bit of your feedback going through this. If there were any challenges aside from the commercials, if there were any other challenges, uh, I think the audio was pretty good, right? The audio, the lighting, we've got lights set up here in the studio. So hopefully all that stuff was good. Loretta, I'm registered. Cool. Welcome in, Loretta. Yeah, Cheryl says, do we have to upgrade? There's, there's no way you guys have to pay. Like, that will not happen. I will not require you all to pay in order to not have commercials. It should be on my end to get the commercials off. And the commercials are still on. So uh, we'll see what happened. Dana, registered, ready to learn. Cool. Welcome in, Dana. Um, awesome. Yeah, so Lisa says, it, you know, when, it, when it's live like this, you feel much more connected. Cool. Marjo, can you show the page for number six while you're talking so I can see that again? Commercial got me. Sorry, Marjo. Commercial casualty. Number six, let's see. Number six, commit to excellence, not perfection. But don't expect other people to share your commitment to excellence. That's really weird, Joyce. The square went away, huh? Did you refresh your page? That's the only reason why that square should have gone away. But I'm going to type in the link that you go to again. Slash WIT live. So, Joyce, that's the link that you can go to. That's what the button would take you to. Uh, let's see. Love that this is live. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Anyway. Well, how are we doing? Uh, on my end, it's 68 people online, but that's just the people that are, that are signed in to, uh, to chat roll. So there might be some other people who aren't even signed in yet. Lauren says, how will we know if we're one of the first 75 or whatever that magic number was? Uh, we'll let you know. And... Um, I'm a softy, Lauren, so if any of you order tonight and we have more than 75 orders tonight, uh, I'll still honor that for you if you take action. Loretta, another commercial casualty. <laughs> uh, the six ways to get leads, yes. That was pretty cool. I just went right to it. Six ways to get leads right there. Hopefully you can see that. Let me see if I'm blocking. Okay, I'll try to scoot off to the side a little bit so you can see that. Warmchattingsuccess.com is where you can go get the deeper training. This is so fun. This is, this is really cool. I mean, I just, I, I feel so much more connected, you know, it's, uh, obviously, it's not a live audience. That's what I would prefer. Um, we should just do an event. Why don't you guys all just come to L.A. and, you know, L.A. area, and we'll just do an event. Um, that would be, you know, plan A. But there's something really cool just about that live energy. It does seem weird that I can't hear any of you, right? But, uh, so it's, you know, it's muted. Um, but it, there's, the live energy, I think, makes up for that. Let's see, Bridget. Um, Bridget, go up a few comments from, from you, like four comments up, put in the link where you would go. Yeah, if there's no buttons, the buttons depend on when you came in and how long. It, it's not a perfect system. I was trying to get the buttons to come in at a certain point in time so you guys weren't distracted by it when I was going through all the um, content and stuff. Lauren, you're awesome too. Taylor, it's midnight in North Carolina. I know. 
And look how, look how committed you are to your life. And, and Afia out in London, it's like 4.47 in the morning out there. But yeah, Taylor, I really honor your commitment. I think that's so cool. And, and I don't take that personally like, like it's, you know, like I'm the reason you're up. Um, I honor that because you're the reason you're up. You're, you have something inside of you that's important enough for you to be this hungry that you will go out of your way and do things that aren't convenient, like stay up till midnight and, you know, we'll see how well you sleep. Uh, but you'll, you're willing to do things that aren't just convenient for you because it's, it's important. So that's, that's what I really honor in you. That's really cool. All right. Yeah, Jim, you'll show up again? Cool. I think, you know, Jim, you, you all know that we're there, Joyce and Jim. Uh, you know that that first pink caddy, that, that first uh, coaches camp was the last. But then so was the second one. That was the last one also. So we'll see if we have a third last one. Well, let's see. Anybody on the line? So Jim and Joyce, uh, there might be any, I don't remember any, seeing any of the other names from the camp. If, if I saw it, uh, sorry. Oh, the link. Brenda. PinkCaddyCoach.com, WIT-Live. That's the link, Brenda. Thank you, Regina. I appreciate that. Um, so Joyce and Jim and a, almost a couple dozen people came out to L.A. about, what, six, I don't know, six, eight months ago, and it was called Coach's Camp. And it was for five days, you guys, five days. It was deep. It was intense, it was long hours, and it was awesome. And it was all about just the beingness of success, really, you know? It was about coaching people. That, that was kind of the hook. How do you At Southern California Edison, an Edison international company, we want you to have the information you need to help keep you and your family safe around electricity. If you see a downed power line, remember, do not approach or touch the line or anything in contact with the line, and call 911 immediately. At Southern California Edison, we work hard and safely every day to provide you with reliable power. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. A family that vacations together, sunscreens together. Find a Hilton everywhere you want to go with rates as low as $109 per night. Book now at Hilton.com slash getaway. Bodying all of this stuff that you would hop on a plane and come out to L.A. for five days and swim in this ocean of empowerment and success and transformation. Kimberly says, or a car. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to fly. You just get out here, right? It could be a car. Most people aren't willing to make that commitment because it has nothing to do with getting on a plane or whatever. Um, a lot of it is because they just really haven't truly tapped into what their driver is. And so... If you don't know why you're really on this planet, then there's not a big enough reason to do something like that. But as soon as you understand, Kimberly, you're only four hours away. Where are you? North or south or east? Probably not west unless, unless you're hanging out in the, in the uh, ocean somewhere. Vegas. Okay, cool. Ve four hours. Wow, you drive fast. <laughs> Well, I'm a little bit further away, so it's, it's usually six hours. I'm about an hour north of Los Angeles. Um, but now, wow, I want to go to Vegas now. Anyway, one of the reasons why people don't do what it takes in the personal development space a lot of times is because they haven't tapped into a big enough reason to, right? When somebody is tapped into that big enough reason, 
then they're willing to do whatever it takes. I mean, that's, that's the name of the program for a reason, you know? Uh, whatever it takes. And if you're chasing ego goals and intellectual goals, of course, there's, there's hundreds of reasons why you wouldn't take time out of your schedule, arrange for people to watch the kids, get the time off work, you know, pay the extra money. Cause there's hundreds of reasons not to come out here. But you know, all you need is the one reason big enough why. And you can take the one reason that's big enough to change your life and to serve more people and that will outweigh all of those other reasons why not to. Right? And when you really tap into that, everything shifts, everything changes. So we got a lot of people that say they would come as long as it's not during seminar or conference time, yet we strategically, Margene, place it in, 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 around where you know, people uh, aren't bumping up against uh, seminar and stuff like that. The first time we did it, we did it tax time. Tax, oh, no, this was the last time, it was tax season. We did it during the tax week. And a lot of people are like, you know, I can't go because uh, you know, it's, it's tax season and there's all kinds of stuff going. You know what we just said? Hey, the right people will go. If it's important enough, you'll go. Get, do the taxes earlier. What are you talking about? Right? You're going to use taxes as a reason that you're not going to change your life? I don't understand that. So uh, if it's important enough, you know, you find a way. You, you, you figure it out. All right. <laughs> Halloween in Detroit. <laughs> That's right, Lauren. What's the risk of not going? That's the question. That's a much better question. What's the risk of not going? Cool. All right. Any other questions, everybody, on any of the content or anything at all about the whatever it takes club or are you the, uh, the whatever it takes system or myself or anything at all? When will the replay be up? Uh, I really don't know. I don't know because I'm not sure how quickly the the video is up and then usually what we have to do is we have to take the video and download it and then edit it and then re-upload it because there's stuff that goes wrong. But we're going to do everything we can to get that video up, um, the replay up in the next couple of days. And if it's at all possible to get it up tomorrow, we'll we'll do that. Taylor says, what are facial boxes? Facial boxes are little boxes you might place in restaurants or gyms or salons, just you know, anywhere in some business that basically is um, trying to get people to give you their name and address or email or phone number or whatever. And usually you offer them something like, you know, put your name and, and uh, email in here to win a chance to get a free pampering session or something like that. It's just like a standalone kind of like a, you know, 24 hour, salesperson really and it's designed to get leads so that's that's what a facial box is yeah you can get facial boxes within you know all the Mary Kay trainings or corporate office whatever they um, you know whatever they offer or you can make your own Loretta thank you for your thank you for your dedication Loretta I, I really truly honor um, you know you being on here for so long Deb, another camp graduate. I'm so happy to see your name. You're registered. Cool. Yes, it's so good to stay connected. And I'm glad you're implementing. That's fantastic. Eagle Deb, that's right. It, anybody that's been at the camp, um, what I love seeing is the connections that are made, right? Like Jim and and Deb just connected here on chat roll and there's a love and a connection that you just can't have unless you share that kind of experience with people. Uh, that's been probably my favorite thing is when we see each other at leadership or we, we hear each other on the phone. I mean there's, there's truly a love and a connectedness that most people don't have and I just felt it right there you know with Deb and Jim and it's just so, so cool. All right, headed to bed. Got it. Yeah, I totally understand, Lauren. Um, cool. 
Well, yeah, bless all of you. Absolutely, Marjean, thank you for that thought. Um, I am honored, excited, inspired by all of you being on tonight. I'm inspired by all of you jumping into the program, and I can't wait to connect with all of you. And one of the, the uh, commitments that I made on Wednesday was to do one of those three laser coaching calls very soon. Uh, I'm going to try to get it done before seminar. When does the first seminar start? I know it's coming up like in a couple weeks. When does the first seminar start for those of you that know? July 21st, you think? Okay. So uh, we, that means only about a week. So um, if I can, I will do a call uh, over the next week, meaning like the week starting tomorrow, or Ruby is the week starting like in a week from tomorrow, uh, Regina. Okay, the week after. So it sounds like it's probably the week after. Um, anyway, okay, cool. J July 21st. So if I can, if I can swing it, then I'll do one of those, those live calls uh, this week. You know, going into seminar, how do you deal with seminar, whatever, you know, whatever I can do. Uh, live stream, not live stream, but or maybe we can do it live stream, now that we know how to do it, as soon as we get the commercials off. But I'll be on and just answer whatever questions I can. Like I said, everything in the program will be delivered and recorded and available to all of you. We're going to do everything we can to make it your most valuable $97 you could ever invest in yourself. And I think we do a pretty good job of that. And if, if you, know, you ever have an issue with any of that, we are to get a hold of. And we really try truly listen, right? So we're going to do everything we can to help you make this your best year ever. With that, everybody, I am going to turn off this broadcast. If you want to stick around on the live stream chat roll, you can. I am going to bow out. Uh, there's a sleepover happening just behind that wall. My daughter and uh, one of her friends that she met in, in uh, theater camp. So I'm going to go re-engage in the family. We've been on for nine solid hours, and I just appreciate all of you tremendously. So with that, everybody, take care. Good night. God bless. For those of you that are in the program, we'll be talking to you real soon. And well, whether you're in the program or not, we'll be talking to you real soon, uh, whether we're talking to you in the program or via you know, emails and videos and all that kind of stuff. Um, either way, take care. And I hope our paths cross really, really soon so we can connect. Take care, everybody. Good night.